Hi, I'm Paul Baxendale, and welcome to the first of a series of podcasts in which I will be talking to the good and the greats of bodybuilding and other industries, how bodybuilding has affected their lives and perhaps their careers. Our first guest is perhaps the world's greatest comic graphic artist, or certainly one of them. And he is my own personal favorite artist since his work encapsulates the feelings and sensations of the intensity, the brutal intensity of hardcore bodybuilding training. And he puts it into his characters within his work, whether it's through his drawings, his paintings or his sketches. The artist is Simon Bisley. Simon, I've known for over 30 years now, having met many years ago at my first ever gym, Mr. DeBee's Gym in Swindon. I knew at once that he was a serious bodybuilder. He trained with a passion and an intensity rarely seen in even top amateurs or some professionals. We've remained friends through all these years. And he's the man who gifted Ronnie Coleman with his birthday present just a few years ago at Body Power. And Simon gave me the honor of giving it to Ronnie. It was a personalized piece of artwork showing Ronnie as Batman. Ronnie, being a huge fan of comics himself, was over the world, over the moon, delighted with the gift, absolutely delighted. I prepared the illustration of Ronnie as Batman for you to see before the podcast begins, as well as some of others, Simon's best known characters, Conan, Lobo, the Incredible Hulk, just as slides before the podcast b begins to give you, perhaps as bodybuilders who aren't aware of Simon's work, an understanding of the type of figures and characters that he draws. And perhaps if you're into comics and the graphic art yourself, it may give you an idea of where he finds the details of the musculature within his characters. One last word I would say is an apology. It was my very first ever podcast recorded and so I apologize for the lack of technical skills, the way it was recorded, the video, etc. Hopefully the audio is, is good and everybody gets that and hopefully the video recording wasn't too bad but in future hopefully that will be greatly enhanced. However, it's the first of many to come. Simon will be back um, with me for another podcast very shortly in which we'll be going much deeper, much more in depth into how bodybuilding and art has been influenced and influences mythology, philosophy and literature since the beginnings of time and how they all interrelate with each other. So that's one for another day and I'll guarantee that would be an absolute delight to listen to. But for further ado, a conversation with Simon Bisley. Okay, there, there, there you go. So, um, yeah, well, we got, yeah big, questions, big questions, big questions, buddy. But, gotcha. um, oh, 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 hey. oh, where are you? <laughs> oh, I you thought, know, I thought so I've been rabbiting off half an hour. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have we done the podcast or is we just starting this thing? I thought we had just done one. We just talked about climate change, didn't we? <laughs> hey, we, hey, we, climate we, change. Guys, we solved the world. We solved the world problem. We solved it. Okay. Well, we may as well have a chat about um, some bodybuilding stuff since we got the world sorted. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Look, before, before we go any further, I'm going to introduce yourself to, um, to my viewers who may not be familiar with your name or who you are. 
Um, obviously, one of my greatest ever training partners. But besides that accolade, I'm sorry, Dorian must come just slightly above you, Biz. There. Oh, um, really? Um, <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. Now, I read today you were nominated for the best artist ever by the National Comic Awards. Is that right? When? When? 2002. Oh, 2002. Oh, God. Yes. But, but I didn't get it. Best artist <laughs> ever. But you were nominated for it. Oh, that's fair enough. Yeah. 1990, you won. Favourite artist. Oh, Eagle. did I? Yes, you did. And 1992, oh. again, more wins, more wins. Best artist, best original graphic cover. Right. Hey. Worked for DC Comics, Batman, Lobo, right. Hellblazer, Judge yeah. Dredd. Yeah. Lobo's back. Oh, Lobo's back. Yeah, well, that's Lobo's yeah, yeah. back. Um, and um, did you do something on X Men Unlimited? Oh, yeah, X Men. Uh, um, I think I brought up the Hulk. You've done uh, a fantastic, yeah, incredible Hulk. Hulk much, I've, I've, I've dabbled. Yeah, I've dabbled a lot. But you know what? It did make me bigger. The it gym did. made me big. Made me stronger, more powerful. <laughs> and um, okay, let, let's let, let's go even further back. So, um, really? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, let's go further back. So, how did you start out? How did you start out as an artist? Because I, I, I remember you telling me either, either you did, you went to art college or you didn't last long at art college. Is that right? No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. Well, the thing is, um, I mean, as, as far as being... Sorry, I can't get this camera thing right. As far as being, being like a, 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 an artist goes, that was inherent in me. That was born in me since I was a child. I was always good at that. That's what I was good at. So um, it's it's what I am, or, or what made me. So I, I, it's so so much like part of me. I don't consider it. It means nothing to me. And when you say I got this award, that award, I just, just yeah, okay, that's fine because that's what I am. You know, I don't see it as. A, I think now it's important to me because it's a, it's a recognition of uh, what I do and, and people on my work. You know. So it's always good uh, <clears throat> financially, clearly, because you know yeah. you're wanted there. Yeah, it's it's, it's an acknowledgement you do right. It does right. But have I, you I, always I, known? Have you always known that this was what you were meant to do? No, no, not no. necessarily. Um, it's what I enjoyed, but I never, never didn't know how when I was when I was younger. Um, I really didn't know how how would someone get into comics? How does someone get into this? I used to read the comics, but I had no idea that um, all you had to do was submit your work and get the job and someone draws it, you draw it, you know, because it's such a high level. And it's like, for me, or when it, it's like, I suppose it's like the same thing as like, when you look at like, uh, the analogy of bodybuilding, you look at a bodybuilder you admire and think, how could it ever get to that? How, how does that happen? Then you find out, you apply yourself to it, you work hard, you know, you start to draw more and you, you get enthusiastic. When you're younger, there's other people in your life that you see and you look up to uh, inspire you, inspire us to uh, to be great, you know, and uh, steer us in that direction, you know. So, uh, and, yeah. Was actually, you, I mean, I, I think you told me many years ago of how you actually got your break um, with um, 2000 AD, I think was the first. 2008, Judge Fred. Yeah, yeah, Judge yeah. Fred. I think you told me the story of that, but maybe you'd like to share that with, with the viewers because... You know, it's like when you're a young bodybuilder and you're looking at Flex magazine or muscular development or let's say, you know, these days online, everything's online. And you're looking at these pro bodybuilders. That's out of our that's out of our reach. How how do we get that? But so how do you break into how do you break into DC Comics? Well, firstly, I'm, I'm not a bodybuilder, definitely not. a bo I'm not a bodybuilder. Um because bodybuilding is a altogether different science, a different spirituality, a different, a whole different kind of um, deal. I've, I've you got know, a disagree uh, with you there, 
Biz, you, right. you, you are a bodybuilder. You've always been a bodybuilder, always. Big grin. Through and through, man. Okay. Through and through. The beginning. Yeah, since, through I was, since I was very, very young, yeah, I was. Okay, well, I, I, that's very sweet of you. I, I, I don't think I don't say. Yeah. It's the truth. No, it's very... You, um, you trained, when we trained together, you trained with more intensity than pretty much anyone I've trained with apart from Dorian. That level God, of intensity. Oh, really? Oh, don't make me cry, man. Really? Oh, no, really. really. Oh. So, with your artwork, so how, how did you break through to, to the comic world? Did you just supply a piece, uh, a portfolio? What I did is, and there's a weird kind of kind of switch to this. I sent some artwork directly to the magazine 2000D when I was about, how old was I, like uh, 18 years old? I sent a bunch of artwork to them. I had no, I had no reply, none, none at all. And then uh, one day, a friend of mine, a year, two years later, uh, was working with uh, an old, uh, in publishing. He said, and he was two years older than me, and a friend in the family said, Simon, give me some of your work and... Uh, Let's give it to, uh, by, by, by the way, I've already got into a, a degree course in, 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 in uh, a Bachelor of Arts degree course. But I turned it down because I ended up actually getting a, an interview with 2000 AD because I showed them my portfolio of art, which, which was based around 2000 AD. Wow. But also I sent stuff to 2000 AD as well, but I'm going to reply. So two years later, got to a Bachelor of Arts course degree, a degree course. After, after uh, finishing uh, a, a year of, uh, you know, what do we call it, foundation course. Fucking hell, that sucked. <laughs> Book failures. If you're teaching that fucking shit professionally, you can't be any good. Can you? I know. You know what I mean? I mean that, that, so that, I, I saw the lecture. Being a lecturer, gone. If you're that good, elect, well, if, you, if you're that good, you wouldn't be a lecturer, full time lecturer on art. You'd be fucking out there making the world, making a living as an artist. You think so? But, uh, well, kind of, but at the same time, not bashing them because there were some great, great teachers, uh, marvellous teachers that, uh, are, you know, really inspired me, I think. And uh, just trying to smooth it over a bit. There you go. Yeah. Right now. But there but, are um, people who love inspiring young people and, and they do like that education aspect. So, well, we, well we, we have to skip, before I answer the question, I have to skip way, way right, right to now and say that we had the same kind of experience that we're not, it's now about giving back. I've got, I've got to the point of... Uh, of, of fame, fame in my own little place, you know. And now it's about giving back, and uh, and you know, it's like a you know, bodybuilders of the past giving information, and it's telling the truth, and really seeing it as is, and, and giving because we're so we're so thing as uh, uh, Paul, we're so guarded when we're younger. We we're, we're competing, we're guarded. We don't want to give anything away. I don't want to tell people how I do draw this or draw that on my techniques and, and everything else. And, and, and professional bodybuilders, they keep it tight. They work in the gym on their own in the darkness or, or, or in the However they're doing it, they're doing it. But why is you, you know, so, so that's how you become a champion because it's all about the individual, all about self, like with yourself, and like Dorian, your experience with Dorian, and Dorian Yates, you know, he, he was trudging through the snow was he knew that the people, people in California were in the sunshine, loving and living it up. But he had to walk fucking miles to get to the gym because it's so snowy. He couldn't drive. But let, me thinking, just, let me just tell you this little item. Does this make any sense? This will make it perfect sense. Dorian, when we trained, he wouldn't allow anyone to watch us. Yeah. He didn't want any distractions, anyone watching us. He didn't want anyone knowing how he did what he did. The a secret. His wife that was there, she was kind of guarding the temple gym. You know, fucking right. That was it. Fucking right. Now, now he's full of knowledge, and it'll give it all away and explain because he's done that. And that's for you because he's he's giving. Now he's giving back. He's giving back because he's you know same thing with all of us. You know, so yeah. I mean, it was a mystery, and that's why was it was it was he called the ghost the spirit or something? The shadow. The shadow. The shadow. It's perfect, and he was. <laughs> he fucking was, and I loved the whole thing. That is epic. You you saw you saw. Uh, I mean, I wish they'd made a movie of that. Uh, you know, you, Pump and Iron was great, very Hollywood and very sunshiny. But God, if they made a made a film, uh, how much darker that would have been with Dorian in like uh, Pump and Iron Two. I don't know, Pump and Iron Three, what it would have been, way darker. But you can see it. That's the commitment. That's the will that he had. He knew 
they had the, you know, he was putting that much fucking, that, all his guts into this thing. He knew he was going to win. And he felt, gave him the strength. But that's, an old, that's another whole series we're going to talk about, I think, on about the fourth podcast, isn't it? We get to that point at some point. And, and, you know, we, we can do all that. But I've, I've got to say, look, I, I, I've been aware of your work ever since we met. You know, when you first walked into my gym, I didn't know who you were. I had no yeah. idea who you were. I didn't care who you were. You were a bodybuilder. You wanted to train. I wanted to help you. That's all it was. We ended up training with each other. Hey, cool. And you've gone again, man. <laughs> no, I, I just, some, someone, what the fuck's going to ring me now? <laughs> Sorry, it's my mechanic. Hey, so, oh my, first time I walked into the gym, the, I got to jump in there. The, oh intensity, my the intensity that you just described. Yeah. With Dorian, how we trained at Temple. I see that same intensity in your in your illustrate your characters they scream intensity they scream, look that's where it your comes conan, from your conan and your love they scream intensity you don't know shit you can't draw or write poetry or, or do anything with any reality or any kind of real truth or real spirituality or real guts that will translate from those that that uh, that uh, guitar made of old wood with iron strings across it, you strum it. If you've lived and experienced the song, the tune will mean something because it becomes there's something behind that. And so one of our drawings, what was coming behind that was the intensity of the training I was doing like with you, and the, and, the, and the blood and the guts, and it was it was a horrific, horrific. I mean, to know understand muscles and and uh, and how they work and they pull, stretch, and everything else. I could visualize that and see how it would work in my artwork. But it's uh, also, there's something so that translates. So when I would eventually draw like superheroes, like the Hulk smashing shit up, I know what it's like to smash shit up. Well, we, you know, we lift the weight, wants to smash shit up. But the intensity, the rage, the anger, well, all those emotions were there, you know? And uh, that's why, and that's what, like I said, that's why I drew Jesus like I did, you know? Because I saw him when I was lifting, when I had 500 pounds on my rack to my back, when I was squatting. I saw a desert plain. I saw nothing, nothing. And then Jesus came to me. <laughs> Someone shouted to me, you see the burning tree? I know. It's kind of a, it's, it's a joke. I, I kind of made it up because it's funny, but it that's isn't, the, isn't. There's it something very real there. Oh, that's how far you do go. That's how we take off ourselves physically. Physically and mentally. That's how we take ourselves because we don't want to go there. But we're prepared to, to, to lift that fucking ultimate weight or push ourselves that fucking far when he goes that far, that far, that far, and then, as the magic words, have you said three more, but three, three more reps, three more reps, and that takes Always. into a whole realm. That take, so when we, when I, so when I drew anything or drew anything of, of covering any kind of intensity with the superhero images, I've been to the gym, I've done it, I've earned that, I can draw that because I've fucking felt that and seen it. You know. So when did you, when did you start that, training? It may, it, it may, the thing is, what's interesting is whilst we're like, you know, uh, patting each other on the back and praising each other. I mean, you know, it's interesting because you're part of my DNA. You're part of what made me, you know. And I think how Dorian inspired you and uh, you, you, yeah. you, uh, you saw what Dorian you know, we're translates. So we, we, we're giving and giving and, and, and expands. It gets bigger and bigger, you know. And uh, so it's interesting. I don't know Dorian Yates. I don't, even, I don't know him from Adam. But his DNA, part of his DNA is in me, through you. And it gives, it goes on. And people who aspire to my work, they have that as well. So it's interesting that Dorian is just a body of other, he's more than that, like Arnold was more than that, because he inspired a generation of musicians, artists, and everything else. I mean, Dorian's physique inspired my Batman drawings, you know, and even yourself. I saw, I saw pictures of you when you were when you, 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 you peak, and you looked incredible. But to see, see, I mean, this, this sounds, sounds too weird, but to see muscles close up in, in, in truth, it's astonishing. It's funny because when people used to say to me, uh, uh, you're a bodybuilder, aren't you? And I, I laugh because people see me, uh, I'm thinking, you have no idea what a real body looks like, bodybuilder looks like, because it doesn't look like me. I look like a guy who trains, but you, bodybuilders? I remember walking walk to a gym about uh, two years ago, 
a local place and there was a proper bodybuilding there. I, sw- I walked in there and I looked and I went, holy fuck. <laughs> Got like a silverback, a shaved silverback gorilla. Do you know what I mean? That's a big altogether difference. Altogether yeah. difference and different dedicates, you know. So when I say, oh, oh, you know, there you the, crazy, the crazy thing is that's like, I was 310 pounds off season. Yeah. 310, 350 yeah. pounds off season. That's how Dorian made me feel. I, I looked at him and went, oh my God, what the f- is that? <laughs> Seriously, I, I, the first time I saw him up close, I saw his back. And it, it was yeah. ginormous. I was like, what, what living beast has got this type of muscle on his, is that human? Is it some sort of throwback to the dinosaurs or something? It was the freakish thing I've ever seen. But that's what I wanted. I wanted that. I didn't want judges to go, oh, that's a really nice physique. Oh, Paul's got really pleasing lines. I wanted them to go, what the <laughs> fuck is that? Oh, look, very pleasing lines. No, I think it was something Dorian said. I think Dorian said that, I remember he said something. Uh, like I said, I don't know Dorian from Adam. I don't know. But I'll pick up bits and pieces. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a cannibal for knowledge, you know. And I remember Dorian saying something, Mr. Yates, sorry, I don't know. I won't call him Dorian because I don't know Dorian. I'll call him Mr. Yates, his respect, out of respect. So Mr. Yates, he said something on, on the, some, some podcast. Many, many years ago, he said, it was, he said, um, I was walking, I, I don't, I'm not doing his voice, but he said, I was walking down, I, was, I think he said, I was in an airport walking through to the terminal or somewhere he was walking somewhere. And pe- uh, oh, and someone said, uh, uh, people looking at him, right? And he, 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 he thinks, he's thinking, what people, why are people looking at him out this way? <laughs> well, what are you looking at? And he thought, well, no, because look at me. Look at, oh, uh, someone said diesel. Yeah, diesel. Uh, I think it was some, some, some uh, a woman said. On an airplane. Uh, it was. On an diesel. That became his thought, nickname after this. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm fucking massive. <laughs> oh, but also, I think it was somewhere else. I think, yeah. I mean, I hate to uh, to. Uh, I think there's someone else, uh, to say things that weren't true, but I think there was something that was said that someone looked at him and said uh, something like, "Oh, we're a freak," and he was offended slightly. But then he thought, "Well, yeah, because I am, because <laughs> I am a freak," and he must have been freakish. You know, I, I remember once I was walking. Um, I was walking home from my first gym, Mr. B's gym, which yeah. is where we met. Mr. B's gym, where me, where we met, however many years it is, um, nearly 30 years ago. And I remember there was a, a guy working on a roof on one of the built on one of the houses, and he just he looked at me walking down the street and just shout out, You freak, what a monster. <laughs> and I thought, what? Am I that am I that different from everyone else? And then I remember yeah, yeah. I was walking through a shop and I caught a sight of this huge beast in a mirror and it took me a second to realise it was me. I was like, shit, that's me. <laughs> Do I look like that? <laughs> I've had this, I, I had the same image not, not too long ago before lockdown. I was uh, walking through uh, walking through a terminal. I think it was I was I was uh, was it Logan or something? Uh, maybe through Detroit. I don't remember. I do go to so many, through so many places. And I was walking along. You always have a perception of yourself. And it was like I'm tired. I've been doing many. Oh, I was through. I think coming back from Australia or something. Yeah. And then, oh, you're Simon, you're so worldly. You travel all over the world. Yes, I fucking do. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I'm proud of that. And I fucking deserve it. But anyway, I caught myself in a, I saw my reflection. Now, I carry my stuff. I have, a, I have a, an army rucksack with my drawing board, my, uh, my fucking rulers, and all my gear and equipment to draw, you know. And I travel around and I, you know, and I, and I do, uh, you know, sign. And I, anyway, I was walking along and I was, oh, there's this. I was looking, I saw this reflection of myself. And I saw exactly what I am. An overweight, overweight, belly, big belly hanging out with a rucksack stooped over with gray hair and unshaven. I thought, holy fuck. 
a traveling salesman. I'm a circus act. I'm not, I'm not fucking uh, some magnificent specimen of a human being that I think I am. I'm just, just a slob, a drunken slob, a drunken overeating fucking slob who travels the world. And that's how I saw myself. I, I, I saw myself hunkered over like this. Look at me. You know, and I, and I, I t- kind of turned me around. I thought, you know what? I'm going to start dieting and go back to the gym and sort myself the fuck out. Yeah. You, you're you looking uh, as well and I, as, I, as, I've, as I've ever seen you, I think. Right now, you're looking as well as I've ever seen you. You've been, obviously, oh, you've been training heavy. Uh, yeah. No, it's always no, Marmite. Marmite. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you've been taking some, you know, remember those old special protein shakes I used to make, you know, the, the, oh, the oh, special those, ones, you know? Uh, yeah, the crumbling that fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, I, I, yeah, anyway. Um, when when, when oh, did you, we no, meet? Do you remember? No, no, pardon? Do you remember when, when we first met? Was it 95? 95? Yeah, but there's I was, you interrupted me, but it's in a good way because I'll make a note of this because I'm going to explain something uh, about that. Um, so we first, but when we first met, but I was going to interrupt about something about uh, that. Yeah, about training, current day, current day training. That's right. Sorry. Go on, go on. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to what I was going to say. You go on. We, we, we first met. Yeah. No, I don't remember. I don't remember. No, well, neither do I. You know, it's like doing <laughs> these vlogs. <laughs> doing well, these vlogs. Let's get I can remember. Part. I can remember the tiniest details, like what people said, what they were wearing, even like the, the color of the Otomix boots they had on, the t-shirts they had on. And I can't even remember what year it was. <laughs> it would about, be 20 years ago, Swindon. Railway, da da da, yeah. backs and da da da. I don't know. Yeah, Mr. B's gym. Well, I, no, what do you think? Nineteen ninety-five. You know why? I remember why? Because we went together to the nineteen ninety-six Grand Prix. Yeah. To see who do we see? We saw we saw Dorian win the English Grand Prix. Paul Dillette, it's Kevin Rowney, NASA. Dorian. It's, yeah. Okay. Um. So. 1995, you came into my gym and um, I think you, 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 you rolled up in a, in a kind of stripped back Harley, wasn't it? It was, didn't you kind of strip it right back to the skeleton or something? It's called a chopper. The chopper, oh. yeah. <laughs> you kind of stripped it all back. And I think no, you said- Yeah, it's a chopper. Basically you take all the shit off it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It- it's way back to the 60s. It's basically what you do. You, it's called a bob or a chip. I called my, oh, mine was a chipper. It was not chopper, but chips so right down to the fucking bare shit. You know, the it bare was right down. There Look was at me. Else on there. <laughs> Look, yeah, you know, well, that's the idea. That's the whole fucking image I was trying to bring over. So what yeah, happened? So I t- it, were, chopper. it was, it was cool. And uh, you, you took me for a ride on it. I, I remember I was, uh, I was on the back of it. Man, and, um, really? Yeah, yeah, we did. We 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 we, did we? Rolled down Station Road, and then no, no helmets on or anything, and then we roared back again, and yeah, it was great, you know. Oh. Um, and I think oh, yeah, we- so the first time you came, he said, "Oh, you know, I'm I'm hi, I'm Simon. Nice to meet you." I said, oh, "Nice to meet you." And I think he said something like, "Um, oh, I'd like to train." Yeah, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Oh, is it okay if I pay you next week? <laughs> Hey, <laughs> I <used to> love you. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you always paid me, but it was like you never paid like like everyone else. It was like it was never weekly or monthly. It was just like, oh, I haven't paid you for for a while. Here's a load of notes, Paul. Here's, here's a lot of notes for you. <laughs> the same thing. Where I currently train, uh, I, lo- I love the uh, the guy who I, I I love you dearly. I do. And the, the guy tr- currently uh, who owns a gym I train at, I love him too, man. He's he's awesome. And I, I don't, I don't know, I don't pay him either. But I just say, you know, I get here, yeah, fuck, it's a lump, it's a roll, you know, right? You know, I do it by feel. I pay by feel, not by by, you know. But it felt uh, right. Huh? It felt right. It felt yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably wouldn't have done it for anyone else, but with I just knew it was, I knew it was cool with you. I knew it was, yeah, you know, it was going to be absolutely fine. 
and I knew there was something there was something about you. You had you had a kind of crazy intensity, similar to something something in the eyes that I had. And I thought this is going to be interesting to see what what we've got here. Let's see how he trains. And you trained you trained crazy intense, and and that's why we teamed up. Well, I think because I had to, because I remember when when uh, well, I recognised your place immediately <clears throat> was there was a, that camaraderie. Now, mm. we talk about war, battles, what's innate in man, what's innate in us as men, as young men, or slightly even older men, is the kind of, um, the, it's, an, it's unexplained, but this, what we do, it's a conversation for not, for not being in a war. In the meantime, we crowd football fields or we, we box or we do something physical. And I think, I think what it was is that men bond together. I think we do like a wolf pack, a pack. We do, we do. And I think that's what happened in the gym is you get the group of guys I came across with you, your, your group of friends, but we weren't friends. I don't think it was about being friends. It's about being who was there, was there. And now let's all fucking go. It's about men are, are drawn to each other for, for some battle that does that, that may have existed but doesn't. So we compensate for that in the gym. And uh, I remember there was a group of, uh, of well, of, I would say us because it was us eventually. You and your other you know, other guys who trained with you, but we go relentlessly through this whole process of like, for example, I would say the, the leg press, the leg, the leg press. press every fucking sunday yeah. now why would i well, why would you want to go there on a sunday why do i want to go there i, I described it un, unrealistically and over the i was over, it's over the top and disrespectfully kind of in a way saying like it's like it's like me i was like driving to my own execution without any without any guards i'm going there no i'm going to be i'm going to die that, that's an extreme i'm not going to die but I'm going to put myself through some serious shit. It's a lovely Sunday. People are in church. I should be in church. Um, yeah, bless Jesus, all right. But no, I go to Baxendale's fucking gym and talk, get get fucking tortured on the fucking on the rack. We called it the rack, you know. The the the, 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 the what do you call it? The uh, leg press. The, leg the, press. The leg press. Load it up. Load it up. I let take it down. Up it up, down. Up and down. Up and down. We go. And it's like. It was horror. It was, uh, I knew it was my turn. Everyone knew it was going to be their turn. And it's like, if you let up, if you don't perform, if you don't put your all in, we'd all know. And you well, failed. You weren't allowed out of the leg press until you got the reps. You weren't yeah, allowed I don't out of the leg press. Oh, I don't know what it was, but it's like, I think a lot of, a lot, a lot of people respect you a lot. We all respected you a lot for the, for the gym. And your, you know, your physicality and who you were, and and, and what you're doing for us, you know, and help, you know, can be it's kind of a hardcore place. Your place is hardcore. It was. Yeah, it was spins. We could, it was like if if I didn't do those last three reps, I would let you down and all the guys in the gym down. Mm. Like I said, they weren't friends. We don't we don't fucking hang out. It was, I think it was like a therapy or some kind of thing we were going through. I don't know, but I think it was very very therapeutically good for all of us. And uh, they were they were tough as shit. It built me. It built me. It built me as a man. And now I'll go back to the part where I was interrupted. And to say that all these years later, Paul, now I train with people now in the gym. No idea. No idea about intensity. No idea about about what the what war is. I'm with seeing yourself. the same thing. There's no to intensity. Go, Nothing about I, I and they think, think oh oh and they all whine and moan about but compete you know I can't lift that much. I'm not hey I tell you what, I, I trained with a woman, uh, her name was Kirsty, and uh, she was a little very really little little woman small, but she was powerful and she has so much strength and commitment. And I trained with her, and you'll you'll agree with this, uh, Paul. It's not about what lifting more than me. But what you can do for yourself and push yourself to the absolute limit could be two pounds. I lift a thousand pounds, you lift 500 pounds or 300 pounds. It doesn't matter. It matter. It's that you push yourself as far as you can go. And uh, she did. And uh, a uh, lot of respect to her. In fact, interestingly enough, I've got to say something. 
there's it's, uh, it's an observation. There's um, I've met, I met I met quite a lot, a few women in, in the gyms who just blank off while we're bromancing. Everyone's bromancing and you know, doing their shit. They absolutely focus and fo- and they so get it done. They get it yeah, done. They, 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 the tenacity and their strength to build it. You know, it's amazing. One of, one of my so, best anyway, ever training partners. Was some a of the women, small, a small petite woman, a small petite a, girl called Julie. She had the yeah. heart of a lioness. Motivates you. Absolutely. Yeah. She was a beast. She was an animal in the gym. She just would not quit. She would not quit. I could not break her. Unbelievable. That's Unbelievable. What you need. That's what you need. And that, and that makes you drive. So it is about spirituality and, and, and all that kind of shit. You know, lift all the weights you want in a day. You know, it doesn't matter. But it's how you lift them, you know. But that brings something all together a little bit different. I mean, the, the many guys who were successful who lived, I think it was, uh, what's it? Uh, actually, I want to ask you a question. Uh, what, what era were you in? What era you look, were you looking at when you were inspired? Remember Muslim Fitness Magazine? Yeah. yeah. What, were you, what were you looking at then when, you were, when your inspiration? Originally, late 1980s. Like Lee Haney? Yeah. Lee Haney, Haney and big inspiration. That was, was going. Barry DeMay? Era, Tom Platts. Yeah, Platsy was a big, big inspiration. Was Tom Platsy? Barry DeMay. Barry DeMay, huge inspiration. Look, his conditioning, good. Rich Gaspari, his conditioning just blew me away. Oh, well, yeah. What about my favorite? What about, uh, yeah, oh, God. Yeah, that's a, yeah, because I missed that uh, uh, whole, whole other era. But it's interesting because all we, what we have, Muslim fitness is a. What, there was Muslim Fitness and something else, wasn't there? What's the other one? Flex magazine. Flex, yeah. Flex. Oh, that's a thing, man. You know, I what? love. It. Yeah. I think the 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 guys and the girls today they, they they miss having that hard copy magazine to flick through. It was something tangible to hold in your hand, look at the pictures and read about what they're eating. I mean, it probably wasn't what they got, what they're all eating. It wasn't. The supplement stacks weren't their supplement stacks. But it was just seeing the photographs of them in contest shape training and just thinking, that's that's what I want. But I, I, I want to take that back slightly to what you were saying about having a spiritual kind of element. I think that absolutely is something archetypal in lifting weights, bodybuilding, in that, in an era where we do not go out to war, basically, we are not warring with our neighboring tribes. We have to find a way, an archetypal way of replicating that intensity and that that closeness to death. Because let, let's, let's not you know, let's not sugarcoat it. Th- that thing on the leg press, you could have broken your leg, you could have snapped tendons, ligaments, you could have damaged yourself real badly. We all could have done every single Sunday. We never did, but the danger was there. The t- danger was tangible, it was real. I didn't know at the time, though. Not at the time. No, you because we felt invincible. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. felt uh- invincible. I think I think uh, this is interesting because I guess the point where <clears throat> I talked to you about later on when I saw Jesus, and um, which is a kind of a kind of a because it's only about like uh, like five years ago when I was uh, like I said not 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 hugely strong but I was I was throwing five hundred pound squats and uh, doing one thousand six hundred pound leg presses for I've rep repetition. Of you. I've got a photo of you but, doing it. With Dan, no, Dan Phipps. Dan Phipps, who's my yeah. instructor. Yeah. And uh, the, the point was, though, it's like, I was saying to myself, as you get older, you, I'm thinking, what, I guess 500 pounds? Oh, the, sorry, the, the squat, the, the, the 500 pound squats were box, box squats. So I was sitting and coming up. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. a, it's not, no, it's not, not a whole it was half a squat. <laughs> what? It was half a squat. That's not a squat. <laughs> well, yeah. 
We, I, I tell you what, squat half squat five hundred pounds. Fucking hell, you know. Oh, the glass. Ask the glass is the only way to squat, man. No, it's not, no. But this, I'm, hey, I'm, I've been self. <laughs> you don't. I'm been self deprecating because what's what? Well, you I don't understand what's. I know. It, I was squatting five hundred there, lighting or whatever, and I was doing all this weight and uh, ridiculous. But because that was my fucking will, I'm not sure it's my, my actual, what, what I realized was I hadn't built the short period of time. I was doing these kind of weights over a period of two months. Now, I hadn't built any kind of, I was any kind of uh, sinew or, or tendon or, or any mm. kind of structure for this. It was my own mind, my will that was making me do this. Now, what worried and the reason why I stopped because one day I walked to 505 pounds and I remember there was a guy who was an instructor who lifted quite a lot and he was quite knowledgeable. He looked at me as I approached it and looked at me and looked away and went, and I thought, you're fucking right. Yeah. And I, I said, I'm doing this. Said, well, I can't say you can do it, look at this. You come on, man. Ah. Because no, no you know why? Because I'll do it. And yeah. at some point, more and more, until something snaps and breaks, yeah. I'm talking to myself, what am I going to do? Try 600 pounds? Because the, the, the main thing is the will. The spirit of self is so strong. You remember that, about that woman who, who you know, that, remember that bad thing about the Hulk? Where yeah. that, there's, there's actual uh, documentation of a woman lifting the, the front end of a car to yeah. help her son. Yeah. It's, so what am I? It's ridiculous. So what am I doing? What am I going to go? Where do I stop? You know. So I, I didn't there do it again. Ways, there were always ways to find intensity apart from the heavy weights. I mean, we used heavy weights and we did high reps with heavy weights, but we also did things like we would do a force rep to extend the set a little bit further. Or if we were doing side lateral raises, we would do half reps and then quarter reps until you couldn't move it an inch. Or then we would maybe use rest pause techniques or neg negatives. So there were always safe ways to extend the set, put the extra stress on the, on the muscles and be safe at the same time. You can still do it now. I mean, now, I mean, we talked about this um, between us personally about uh, just, just, just going lighter, but you can really absolutely, I mean, what I found also, I mean, going back to what I'm going to say, but, but before I do, it's like, uh, it's like, uh, why are you just going like this? Why are you going like this? Oh, because I have to work, I have to make sure I'm okay for the last set. Okay. Doing this, right? How about doing this? Squeeze. Down slow. Make it really hard. Every set's hard. It makes no sense to me. So it's like it's like a lot of lot of lot. Of, we, we're going back to that uh, thing interruption thing where they go through the process. I think that's gonna be okay. It's like, that's it. No, you, you don't know come from. You don't felt it. You've done nothing. You can went through it. Think you've done a good exercise. It's a matter of getting. Is it a matter of getting it done or, or getting it done? Making it work. The whole point is to suffer. Make yourself suffer. Yeah. You know? And feel it in the muscle <laughs> and nowhere else. And uh, Lee, uh, Lee now, Haney. Yeah. Lee Haney. I saw Lee Haney in, sem in seminar, maybe 1987, something like that. And yeah. I remember him telling everybody in the room stimulate, don't annihilate. Stimulate, don't annihilate. And look, Lee yes. trained heavy, but he trained, all the stress was on the muscle. Like he tried to avoid it being on the, on the tendon or on the joints. He avoided, like, don't ever lock your legs out if you're doing like a hat squat or a squat. Never lock your legs out. Keep the tension on the quads. The That's same true. with the chest. Keep your arms slightly bent at the top of the movement so yeah. the stress is always on your pecs. Yeah, yeah, fucking right. I mean, the thing is, for example, like, when you down, for example, you down at this position. At this position, as you begin to push, you flex immediately. And you, you, what you do is, like for example, people push with their arms, or the shoulders of their arms. 
squeeze a, squeeze a chest, squeeze a chest, make the chest push it, may go forward. This shouldn't be do anything. I mean, it will do something, obviously. But it's about triceps and front, front, front yeah, shoulders. Front downs, front downs and triceps. Yeah, yeah. Just, just push with your chest. And as you go up, squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. If any, if any point you can go to this point, that, that's the best point you can go to. So any, I would say, we know if you do wide, it's fine. But I reckon if you get some, not, not do triceps, but somewhere between, between wide and, 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 and super narrow, somewhere in the middle, and come and squeeze. It's about the squeezing. You're training that muscle. It's interesting because when you're doing like side lats, you, we use a small amount of weight, just a little squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Sque feel that. It's a tiny muscle. You're not working the whole fucking thing. If you want to do mass, then there's a mass thing. But I think you should keep mass to mass, and uh, but the individual with bodybuilding. So, you know, it's not, I don't think, it, yeah, you're right. It's not about, I, I think people, oh, if I lift heavy, I get big, but you do, you will get, you will, I think I'm, oh, I'm, around, I'm going so far ahead of myself. I, I think it's time and seasons as well. You know, it's like in, in, in our 50s, we, we shouldn't train heavy. There's no need for it. We're, we're not going to be. We're not going to grow much more muscle tissue at our ages. We we're lucky if we cling on to what we've got. You know, cling on. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> when, oh. when we were in our twenties, oh. when, we oh. oh. when we were in Mr. B's oh. gym, that was when that was when we grew. And you know, I remember one crazy day. Crazy, crazy day. You wanted to lift. We were doing chest, and you wanted to go pound for pound with me. Now, I was probably three hundred pounds at the time. I don't know what you were. You were a lot lighter than I was, and you wanted to go. You wanted to use the same weights that I was using. And then we then we got onto incline flies. Do you remember? No, no. I think what I did was I, 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 I you, I, you, you took the weights, but I grabbed more convinced okay i'll tell, tell the story oh. yeah what happened go on then go <laughs> <You know>. on <laughs> <you> go on <laughs> oh no it is what i'm very proud of this oh no what happened was uh paul was doing, we were doing flies 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 and paul was bringing up come right coming down Ooh. <laughs> come on up all this shit oh, oh yeah, yeah i was so enthusiastic no, it was the same way you were doing. No, I grabbed and, and, and I did what you did. I remember, yeah, I did the same thing. Got him up. Right, up and I came down and both my shoulders dislocated right back like I was being tortured. And and as, as, as my shoulders came right back, I heard a... No, it was some water here. It was like... Mm. Fucking hold no. my head. No. The fuck off. Ripped off. It was, it was. I think it was. From, I don't know if you can see. Is it there? It's from from here to here. Anyway, all, all I all remember on. the Ended craziest up. thing. Yeah, the craziest thing though. Two weeks later, you're back in the gym. Your chest is. It feels like it's got steel wires. Yeah, in here. Connecting here, here, it. Been... So it was like your pick was your pick was still yeah. attached. I think you're made of. I think you're made of titanium, buddy. I, I think you're a. I think you're what a happened, mutant. So what happened? What happened was, it tore. It tore from here, from here, and ended up here, in there. Oof. So it tore under the under the under the deltoid, and um, yeah. So what happens is, exactly. You, what you do is you so your mind is so attuned, so happy, and so absolutely, it's oh man, it's a whole thing. I still get a buzzer right now. You just fucking want to, you want to go, you want to lift, and there's something enormous, and because your mind's so strong, and but your body can't cope. So that's the danger. That's the danger. Uh, is that um, you know is uh, <laughs> basically your body can't cope with the with your mind. But that 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 is good because at least that that mind. So you have to discipline your mind, and um, 
kind of have a have a conversation with it and think, well, what are we going to go here? So later on in my years, which kind of comes back to what I talked about earlier, is that five hundred pound squat or that one thousand six hundred pound fucking repetition thing. I remember the time with you, Paul, and I thought, and, and you, remember you look when when it, when, it, when uh, my, my my shoulder fucking when 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 the, when, it's, when the the pec busted, the whole rib, whole lump, like a rubber band, whole strap. You, 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 you were going, yeah. You knew it. You, you could see mm. it was going to happen. It serves me right. But guess what? I'm bigger and stronger and I'm better for it. And yeah. I got a story to tell. I got a story to tell. That's right. And a war wound. A if war you haven't got any war yeah. wounds, you don't have many stories to tell. How many <laughs> scars you got on your body? <laughs> I've got a few scars on my body. <laughs> But, okay, let's go back to that leg press. There were four of us that in on this one particular day. There were four of us. There, there was yourself. There was a guy called Slim. Do you remember Slim? Probably not. No. Slim. No, no. He was, no. he was a tall guy. Now, he wasn't Slim when he started at the gym, but he became Slim through training. <laughs> but we kept calling him Slim. <laughs> you know? And there was somebody else. There was four of us, and we each took it in turns. And we had, to get, yeah. we, we had to get fifty reps with the weight. And you weren't allowed out of the leg press until you got fifty. You could stay in there all day if it, if you had to. You were going to get fifty reps. And who, who was in there? There was it, Slim was in there, and he was on I don't know rep thirty, thirty one. You're fat, uh, big, yeah, uh, big guy. Yeah, oh, that's right. Oh, no, no, comfortable. Yes. He was comfortable. Yes. He was comfortable. Yes. <laughs> and do, do you remember what he screamed as? <laughs> you fucking bastards! I fucking hate ya. <laughs> remember that? I told the story today. He's on there. Looks like, oh, fuck off, all of ya. <laughs> and he did it. He really lost it. But... Then he got the reps. So he you found that, that he found that, a new dimension. Fuck you. Fuck you. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Because we push and put look, look, it was this is fucking Sunday therapy. Yes. But all the yes. do a cycle, fly a cunting kite, do la di da every fucking day, write some fucking cunting poetry, listen yes. to some music, write some shit. You know, we fucking did. We were pushing thousands of pounds of weight. Pushing ourselves to the point of oblivion to death. And really? we loved it. And really? we loved it. We did. We, we did love it. I drove. It took me fucking 20 minutes to get there for torture. Guess what? I loved it. Oh, man. It's a oh, great wow. fucking days. Great days, man. Crazy days. That was a great gym. I, I remember some summer evenings. Um, you used to come down during the day mainly, I think. But summer evenings... There'd be a line of motorbikes. There'd be a line of American cars parked outside the gym. The roller shutters were, I'd pull them right the way up so the evening sun would come through. I'd have the music as See? loud as it would go, Slayer, Slayer blaring out. Remember I had like a, like a, like a, I, I had a Mercedes uh, AMG tuned up yeah. fucking thing. One of the guys that had such a Ford fucking big fin raced up fucking Cosworth thing. And we yeah. just go around thing. <laughs> just come. Oh my god! Because we we drove up to um, we up we drove up to Nottingham to the Grand Prix in your Mercedes, didn't we? We did when we got the Grand Prix, yeah. With with with, with uh, Hackney, Hack, 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 was it Hackney? Hackney. Oh, was it Hackney? Was it? No. No, there's two. Uh, Paul, we went to uh, we went to see. Uh, Yates, during Mr. Yates. Yes, in seminar. It, the seminar, and yes. then later on, uh, you and I went together, I think you drove, we went to see the Mr. Yeah. Olympia Grand yeah. Prix with yeah. the big motherfuckers, I mean, the big guys, I mean. Yeah, you know, I, I was looking at, I was looking at who, who was there that day. Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman Ronnie was Col there. Oh, Nasser El 
I just remember Dillon. Paul Dillette was there, looking but crazy he, huge. He was so big. Yeah. That's all I can remember. Oh, maybe there was Dorian, obviously. And there was... Um, Kevin Ravoni was there. Yeah, and there was... Who's, who, oh, come on, who's that other... Oh, that, that, that black, the black, uh, uh, other, other black dude. It was fucking incredible. What's his name? I think he lose his leg. Flex. Recently. Flex Wheeler. Flex. He was there. He looked fucking immense. Look at his fucking, look at his fucking hands and shit. Incredible. Oh. Flex looked amazing. And yeah. Dylan looked kind of wobbly, but big. But he was massive. He, he was. I mean, when they first came out, Dylan was kind of a giant. Dwarfed almost was, everybody, really, but he couldn't really control yeah. his physique particularly well. NASA was like, very big. NASA, I don't remember NASA. No. Yeah. And, and we were in. I, I, hey, I, remember the. Yes. Remember, remember uh, Dorian? Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Dorian, Dorian's, uh, Dorian's, I've never seen a bodybuilder before except himself. And uh, pretty impressive, you know. Seeing, seeing it's you and some of the guys at the gym, your place. I remember when Dorian walked out on, in Hackney on the seminar and he was off season, but you know those fucking bulls you see? You know those bulls in Italy, you see? that all fucking steroid bull muscles upon muscle upon the muscle. The Belgian bulls, yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. Now, you know the fucking the statue of Hercules from fucking century oh fucking five or oh nine. It looked like that. I mean, Marthus, you know, yeah. walking. Yeah, this is like Hercules. This is most of my God. I think he looked great then. I preferred him looking like that rather than yeah. chiseled. Yeah. Look, uh, everyone went. Everyone, went oh, everyone, everyone took a breath, didn't they? Is that oh, you fucking shit. unbelievable? Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I remember seeing Dorian like twelve weeks out from the Olympia. 10 weeks yeah. out from the Olympia, eight weeks out from the Olympia. I thought he looked at his best between eight and six weeks out from the Olympia. He was yeah. he was about oh, two, 288, something like that. But he was shredded. He was shredded at 288. His glutes were completely out. He was so yeah. full. But he wanted to get so granite hard that he just always went right down. But to see him at that heavier body weight but he, and he was still shredded was a sight to behold and I don't think I don't think anybody's ever seen Dorian like that because he never presented himself on stage like that and he was unbelievable like, the freakiest thing I've ever seen in my life that man's back it's, his calves oh it's interesting Paul to imagine if he was around in the t days of look our fantasy is to imagine what would Arnold be like if, if he was in Dorian's age with technology and I, you know, the techniques that are. But what if what if Dorian was in in the uh, the seventies with Arnold and, and Colombo? Would that physique and, and his his with the fuller size thing? You know, he would. I mean, if you if you get, if you put for example, yeah, if you put Dorian. Amongst in in his off season, where he look would look like a sixties or seventies type of guy. Yeah, would have fucking blown them all away. You do you think? It's, hard, it's so hard to say because we we don't know what Arnold or Lou Ferrigno would have looked like with the with the. Yeah, I, don't, I know, but look at the advantages of of, of the nineteen nineties bodybuilders. It's hard to say. Like hard you know, to say Arnold. That. People used to criticise Arnold for his, for his weak legs. In 1974, he had tremendous legs. You know, it's like when he wanted, he had bad calves when he started. But then he but grew great calves. So it was like no, his Arnold, mind was stronger than his body too. Arnold, it appears to me, looking at everything, that it was a small window of where he was really the best. Yes, very, yeah. 74, 75. Right. But the, the problem is I have is that... Um, no, the problem I have is that even when people said uh, Arnold shouldn't have won, he still had the best aesthetics. He did. He had stage charisma too. That's what he did have. And, and he kind of won the crowd over. Uh, yeah, okay. Who could have beaten Arnold? And, and, uh, 
Well, I, I think I think probably Roy Callender was was for me. He he should have got that, but difficult, difficult. Who's that black bodybuilder, the French guy? Portier, or that was his name? The French, French. Serge Nubray. Serge Nubray. Look at yeah. Serge Nubray. Oh, I don't unbelievable. Perfection. Perfection. Yeah. Nubray yeah. lifted, uh, he lifted uh, fairly uh, fairly lightly, but intensely, he apparently. He did Serge Nubray. Very lightly. Looked magnificent. And he looked oh, magnificent then, into his later years, too. Yeah. What a physique. Uh, he was way better than Frank Zane. Oh, I thought I thought he had a better. Well, I think so too, personally, but not better than Arnold, didn't he? I, I, I think so. I thought certainly Bray was absolutely I, incredible. Standing naturally, not moving, not posing. He had he, he was perfection. Mm. And what about um? Oh, I my my friend Serge Serge Serge, Serge Oliver. <laughs> Sergio. Sergio. Yeah, you know I. Um, Mag, on oh, fucking believable. My 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 father-in-law, my father-in-law. Was he Cuban? Kurt, he met was he, Serge. Was he Jamaican or Cuban? Cuban. Cuban, yeah. Cuban, yeah. My, my father-in-law, he met um, Sergio Olive when he went over to Australia for a, like a guest posing seminar tour, yeah. and and Kurt said he had the biggest hands. Of anyone he'd ever met, they were like shovels, two shovels <laughs> on the end of his arm. They were enormous. He, he said he was, he said his favorite bodybuilder was Arnold by a long way because he was Austrian too. Kurt was Austrian, so obviously Arnold was going to be his favorite. But he said Sergio had the most impressive physique, like his waist to chest ratio was unbelievable, and his look, arms. Oh, and look at Lee Hain. Hey, what I noticed, especially when I was watching, uh, I was watching um, Sergio do 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 um, do uh, do uh, uh, barbell uh, curls, very wide, wide. Do you know what I mean wide? She was coming really, really wide, so it was like coming and you know, push, pulling that, put you know, if you come in here, he was really, he's, he's really, really wide. So it's like extending him. Push pulling up that you know tiny muscle, yeah, tiny tiny muscle. So I mean, I I, I remember we used to talk a lot about. Um, oh, your... Paul, can you give me yes. two minutes for, 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 for a little? Yeah, see you see you in a minute. I'm I'm just gonna have a little sip of my um ten year old malt single malt here. <laughs> you already have. We we've been, we've been talking all this time. You can have that one tipple. I know. <laughs> no, I'm gonna... yes, wait. Five minutes. Hey. Hey. The good shit. Oh, yes. You've been working today? I've been working my ass off, yeah. Just... Have you? Oh, yeah. yeah so, uh, not particularly. Went out for the, with the family today uh, for a meal and shit. And, uh, had some food, you know, which is interesting. It's, uh, I tell you what, this morning I went for breakfast at nine o'clock at this place called the uh, <clears throat> called the Edge, which is kind of cool, you know. It's okay, yeah. but uh, the, the uh, it's like nine o'clock in the morning, man. I'm a little bit hungover, but uh, you know, because I've been drink, drinking too much Coke, Coca Cola, <laughs> and um, I'm glad you specified that. Yeah, so, so they, they present me with this sandwich. I said, oh, what do you want? Oh, I'll have this. Okay. So I like a steak and egg sandwich. Like, it's and what a pres nine o'clock in the morning, half awake. And it's this thick soda bread with like a big side of bison beef chopped up with an eggs on top. Oh. And two halves, like this fucking monstrous thing. I think. And it's all covered, hey, hey, but it's all covered in melted hot butter. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, that, I'm I'm feeling hungry now. <laughs> I no, <laughs> I'm a pig, but it's lying to me. Ah, no, yeah. was, I, 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 I gallantly ate all of it. You had to think I of the muscle. You know, it's like okay then. Think of the starving muscle fibers there, man. 
Yeah. It's nine o'clock in the morning. He said, yeah. And also we do work like a, a really good Bloody Mary. I said, what the fuck is Sunday? Should not be in church, Paul. Huh? Should Sunday's, be in church. Sunday's leg day. Sunday's leg day. I've done my leg days. Oh. They were so, fucking amazing. There's the Grand Prix. The one thing I remember most about the Grand Prix is when Dorian came on stage, you got on your chair and screamed, beast, beast, beast. Yeah, it. No, no, I, I was a bit me for fucking that, wasn't it? Yeah. You were like, what's wrong with him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were all doing it. We, everyone was screaming it. The whole place erupted with beast, beast. <laughs> But why are we? Because we love we love to see the extremes of what the human body can develop. Yes, but why? I don't know why. Why do we? Because it connects us with an archetype that we all want to transcend into becoming, and we spend life we spend our whole life trying to become this thing. And it doesn't matter where, whether we get there or not, but it's it's the it's the effort in the attempt that every day we strive to become oh, more what, than what we were I, yesterday. Oh, why do we as men want to see other men uh, uh, ourselves? Do we see ourselves in them? What we can be? Do oh, we like celebrating I said, them? The, the compensation for war, football is war. It's yeah. compensation. It's a need in man, a need in us as men, especially younger men, for war. So football replaces that. The reason why we fight in, in the streets and what we are, because we're, we're like a warlike race. I mean, the Brits, we're English. <laughs> we, we were invaded by the Vikings, the yeah. Romans, the Germans, all the fucking crazy fucking invaders of the world. And it's innate in our genetics, and we just want war. So I don't think we, we're looking for war, but we just kind of help ourselves very much. For a tiny country, Britain, we're always up for it. We're tiny. Yeah. Apparently, I talked to a guy who does maps of the world, maps, and I don't think yeah. there's a name for it. He said, Britain is so small, they have to make it bigger to appear or actually be seen on the map. Yeah. But for a tiny wow. country, we, but we, we're fucking crazy. We're crazy motherfuckers. I know. And um, we used to you know, be. Are we still? I don't know. Maybe it's. I don't know. Know. No, maybe. I mean, what, I don't do, you, know. what <laughs> do you see in the gyms today? Do you see people going crazy, insane, fucking hardcore, I'm... screaming, yelling, throwing weights around, slapping each other, fucking roaring? Bestial hey. cries of animalistic hey, pain. Hey, and... remember, remember, remember the time I smashed around her face? I know what you're going to say. I know this story. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like, it's just, it came out of my mind. Well, if I were training, we're training. I'm a bit of a novice, you know, Paul's big and massive, and he's there. He's, he's you know, more as professional. He's, he's, he's there, you know, and the size and everything. I'm kind of a bit of a novice, you know. I'm kind of like, well, if I smack, if I smack Paul around the face, that's really going to motivate him to lift and push harder. <laughs> so you're about to do a set, of, a set of something I don't know. But I go, I can't remember. <laughs> I smack around the face, and he goes, "Yeah, that doesn't motivate me." And I ran away. I ran away, and he was chasing me. <laughs> but my legs are so weak from I well, my legs I was chasing you. My legs, legs are so weak from, from squatting. I couldn't. Well, they were wobbly. And no, no, it's quite literally. No, no, I didn't run away. You didn't chase me, but I smacked you. It was and you funny. Were, you were furious. But and isn't I thought, it funny? Oh, what motivates one person doesn't motivate someone else. <laughs> but what's funny about it? It's totally random. Yeah, you just got smacked me in the face random. by It was crazy. Crazy. That, that, oh, that, that was pure biz. You know, that was like, that was the reason I loved you and I love you still because you, you still do that. I'm sure if I went to the gym to you, with you tomorrow and we're going to be in the gym together at the end of the month, remember? Yeah, we're hey, training January. at the end of the month. Yeah. 
you might slap me around the face again. <laughs> I'll probably be more easy going these days. I'm chilled out now. <laughs> I go, yeah, so next, so no, before, so if I do to you now, we go, that doesn't motivate me. Yeah, okay, maybe different. <laughs> maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit harder. I don't know. But no, it, it's all part of the shit, isn't it? So let, let me ask you a question. So we're asking the question why young men in particular, but you know, young women also, they're looking at these bodybuilders and, and these um, these fitness athletes, the um, the fitness skills as that's the ideal that they want to attain. For the young men, the, the bodybuilders, okay, things are different now. They're aiming for softer looks and more of a beach look, but Hardcore bodybuilders always wanted that pro bodybuilder look. Now, I think there's something deeply archetypal in that, deeply metaphysical in almost a spiritual, mythological sense where we want to become almost godlike. We can't become godlike, but we want to become godlike. Now, the, the, the people, the, the fans of your comics and your art, are they also trying to find something archetypal that they can that they can respond to, that they can see and uh, that that's the archetypal of what they would love to be or how life would be like. It's almost but life isn't like that. It's just an escapism. Is there something similar in that? I mean, they look I at think, Conan. Everybody I looks at Conan. It's about the ideology. I don't think with uh, the modern sense, sensibility, younger person sensibility, has anything to do with strength, power, being, you know, um, powerful, all these things. I don't know. I really don't know because I'm not young. I don't know. I mean, there's still people at the gym are very young who want to get strong. And there's many women I know who want to get strong and powerful and um, for themselves. I don't think it's, it's for... I don't know. Is I, I, I see, I don't know what it's, the purpose of it is. I don't know. Don't get it so much. You, you think know? there might be something... Breaks on it. No, no, breaks on, but no, no, no. Hear me out. You asked me a question. Okay. Well, Dorian Yates, for example. Dorian. Would, or, or would say, well, okay, I got to that point, so where did I get to and where am I now? And what was the point? What was the fucking point of it? And uh, So what, you get big, strong, powerful, ideological, ideal, and you get attained, Herculean, uh, magnificence. So for, to what end? And what to end up as? I mean, it ended up because it was judged by those after. So he became what you would say normal, like a normal person, and not, not that, that beast anymore. Um, so he became just ordinary. But he attained it. He attained something. I think it's about that he did attain. He achieved. And that, like an artist was going to do like the Sistine Chapel. What, what Dorian did was... Remark, remarkable in the sense that um, I think, you know, he, he took, took uh, being a bodybuilding seriously and took it to the, to, to the very height of things. And he's very analytic and very kind of sensible in his way of thinking and talking. You listen to that. And he got to where he needed to go and he achieved it and that was enough. And he, he knew when to dip out and carry on with the rest of his life, you know. So he's legendary in the in that he made a massive statement, and it's like a, a, a blueprint for all eternity. It's like blood guts, blood and guts. That's how you get it. And I think for me, like uh, Mister 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 Yates, is that uh, when he talked about listen, when he when, this is important. When he talked about trudging through the snow up to his fucking knees. But how many miles to get to the gym to work out? 
whilst he knew everyone else was working out in the sunshine and the love of that, he, he knew he was working harder. That means everything. If you're a writer, an artist, mm. an individual, whatever you do in your life, what Yates did when he trudged through that snow, when he walked through that snow and his knees and legs were aching he, to get to the fucking gym to get shit done is a representation, is, 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 a, is a, a, a hallmark of what, is, uh, like a, a blueprint for everybody to, to see. To yes, know. exactly. Yeah. Me trudging through the snow to get to my shoe to paint the picture. Yes. For, for an artist to paint his paint to paint his paintings, for a poet to write some poetry, for an actor to do his part. Yates, get through the fucking ice and snow and there. Bodybuilding is not about lifting up so weights. It's, more, it's so much more than about the achievements and lifting weights. Yeah. He had the intelligence, the tenacity, and the mind. Yeah, the integrity, goal. the virtue, and the honor. Yes, these, these well, there, are, there, may, there may well have been a, a, a curse. Now, this in a romantic sense, it's a curse of, of, of you. It's a curse of the person to make yourself suffer for a yeah. goal, but you don't know why. But guess what? It turned out okay. It worked for him. And he persevered. But, uh, you know, every poet, every fucking orchestra, a writer wrote a great orchestra, Everybody who writes a great metal piece, everyone writes a comic book, everybody who writes um, anything. Dorian on the on, on walking through walking through the snow, bang on the button. It it's for, for everybody who goes through any kind of life, just trying to make yeah. it in the world, trudging through the snow on your fucking knees. Yeah. And, and that's such a great lesson for everybody. Such yeah. a great lesson. Because it shows. It didn't matter that he was six times Mr. Olympia. What he showed was the perseverance, the determination, the tenacity. He showed the honorability, the integrity, the virtues of trust. You knew what he said, he would, he would stand by his word. He was a man of honor when I knew him. You know, what he said he would do. You could count, he was absolutely rock solid. Now, those are attributes that can, you can put across any type of job or artistic endeavor or whatever you want to do, whether you want to be an engineer or an artist or whatever, maybe those archetypal attributes, that is what's crucial. And maybe these, these are the lessons that we can be taking from people like Dorian, I, people like Lee Haney. I think more could be learned from Dorian Yates, accidentally, than like Arnold. Yes, I, I agree. I, I think, I, I'd almost say that, like, I don't know, Mr. 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 Yates, but I say that he was had a purpose and he doesn't know really why. He was driven by something, an innate spiritual something altogether dark and beautiful that drove him to gain, to gain this. It wasn't for glory, but ultimate glory would be his to be gained. But Arnold's was different. It's mm. almost like he wanted a celebrity, wanted to gain. Yes. But I think Dorian saw it almost more mechanically, maybe. He didn't want There's that. Some, it was almost like a monk in a church. Dorian Yates was like a monk in a church serving his sins. No, I'm not saying he had sense, but he was doing what he had to do to get the way he needed to go. A dark yeah, past sort of analogy, because there's Bumble's something I wanted, to, something I wanted no. to ask you about. It's almost it's like perjury. Yes. Redemption. Again, so we're moving Redemption. into a spiritual realm again. Isn't there the something, Dor something archetypal about? Yes. Yes about dying yes. something some part of yeah. you has to die some element of your personality something within you has to die in order for you to be resurrected a new better stronger yes. it's like the juicy jesus crucifixion story but it's almost like 
archetypal to everyone. We all have to, at some point in our lives, we have to let certain things die off within us because they're no longer useful to us. And we have to become anew again, better, stronger perhaps, but stronger in different ways. I, I don't know, but I, what I, like, what I, I, get, I look back on yeah. my career and I'm, I know I'm always changing and more, I'm always learning. And I look back on my bodybuilding career and I, I love, I love that period of my life, the golden era where I was competing and training crazily, insanely intensely. Loved it. And my mind's like, I can still go there in my head today, but I'll never go there in the gym again today. But I think part of that part of me has died almost, but in its place has resurrected something else, something where I'm, I'm trying to improve other aspects of who I am in better ways. Like, what do you think? Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I think with, um, it's all about that. I think it's, it's all about self-improvement, self, self-worth. I mean, that's, that's that's why it kind of kind of said what I said about Mr. Mr. Yates and himself. You know, it's like um, it's just kind of like uh, some you something darker, but you have to be, you need to grow your fucking wings, grow wings, you know, and fly, and 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 damn everybody else, you know. I don't think you think these things aren't these things are ethereal and come from a darker place. That's what I think. Like, I think with you as well, and and Yates, it's like from a dark, uh, Mr. Mr. Yates. It comes from somewhat darker. These forces, this strength, this will, comes from somewhere darker. It doesn't come from the sunshine and the sea and beautiful chicks and a lovely lifestyle, sports cars. It comes from darkness. But the suffering. darkness is within us. It's within him, and it's in, it's, it's within him, and it's within you, and, it, and it's poetry, within your art. It's within best, your art too. Best poetry, the best poetry, the best music, the best of everything comes from darkness, and individualism, and self worth, and want to be better and improve yourself, and um, yeah. So the blueprints, you know. So you know. You should throw Donny Yates, uh, you know, training program into into the world, but you can't teach. The thing is, Paul, which we have, uh, we, we we agree mostly and talk about, it's not so much the training as as much as the the spirituality and and, and the the travel, the journey. I mean, what are we going to do? Blow our brains out, stab ourselves to death, shoot ourselves in the head? No. So we, we you know, eh, then. The closest thing to suicide is probably lifting heavy weights and pushing yourself to the point of oblivion. Yeah. <laughs> the analogy there is maybe a bit, bit, bit sensitive, but you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it's like punishing. No, not punish. Is it punishment? It's kind of a something. I was trying to find it. Let's, let's put it this way. If someone said, Simon, uh, why do you want to go on this SAS course? Why do you want to go on this course with us on, and, and uh, do this SAS course to see how tough you are? You know what I say? I say, because I don't know myself, because I want to find myself. I don't know I can do this. I don't think I'll win. I don't think I'll pass the course. It's about me. and what I, It's about Paul. It's about knowing who you are. You have a moment, you want to be a win. As, a, as, as males, as men, you want to be better stronger and bigger all these things that's inherent and we can't help that and we should celebrate that that's uh, hey we should alone. It. It. I, I think something that something as men that we we don't do and we're almost we're almost taught to not do it like the societal narrative is almost like don't go there don't go to your dark side but we have to go into our dark side to understand who we are to bring the best out of us. We have, yeah, look at, look yeah. at all the superheroes. You know, all the best superheroes are the ones with the darker sides. 
Batman shouldn't be this nice superhero cleaning the streets up. He's got a dark, dark side of him, Batman. The you know. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But like when know. you draw Batman, that's a different Batman. Because when I look at your Batman, I can see the darkness in him. Like is he's he, he's understood that that Jungian conception, the 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 dark side of himself. He's been there. He's found it. He's sampled it, and he's not afraid to express it because he knows that. Without it, he's naive and he's at the mercy of everyone around him. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, but yeah, but why though? But but why would he bother? Why does it matter to him that he should? Because no, 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 no but hear me, hear me, hear me, yeah. hear me out. I know you got you got you know, but I'm thinking. I would say yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's absolutely right. Yeah, fucking right. But. Why would you bother? Why do you just have a comfortable life in your riches? <laughs> and and uh, 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 Mr. Weston, don't be bad, man. Just fucking enjoy the rest of your life. But there's something he's driven by something we don't know. I don't know. Because we don't want a comfortable worth, life. The world we being don't Captain want a comfortable America. life. Is we don't want being it. Is it worth being Captain America? Is it worth being the Joker? To what end? To what end? What point do you get to that what to what? For why? Because life is an adventure. When you, when you get old and fucked up like we do, so yeah. what do we achieve? Well, we achieved fucking glory. We did. We did. And, then... and <laughs> like I, I gave you that analogy a little while ago, and I, right. I'm going to explain it to everyone out there who maybe has felt this or maybe hasn't. But it was like what leg day was like with, with Dorian in Temple. It was literally, there were moments in that workout. I did not know if I was going to survive the workout. I did not know if I was going to lose consciousness. I felt like, especially on those Smith machine squats, when you knew he was going to at one point say three more reps, and you were dying for him. You were longing for him to say three more reps, but he wouldn't say it until you, and you were absolutely gone. You were exhausted. Your legs had absolutely blown away. The fibers were fired up. They were cramping. Then he said three more reps. And it was like, metaphorically, in your brain, you're walking to the edge of hell and leaning over the, the darkness of hell looking down into the fire, fiery pit and the devil's there laughing at you and you laugh back at him. You laugh back at him and then you pull back because you know you've conquered it. You've conquered that, that moment of death, that decision. You've chosen to go beyond what you personally ever thought you could do and you've conquered it. You've done it. I'd be interested to know. Um, I don't know. I would say that uh, there's, there's so many people that um, that um, just don't just don't get that. There's some some interesting guys in the gym now that I'm going to say that I talk about you often. I say, "Oh, we trained so hard today. We trained hard. Was it good?" I said, "I'm thinking to myself, we were close." They have no idea. No way close. You joking? I would say, look, I've got Baxendale coming down. And they'll uh, train you. And they're going to suffer, man. They're going to suffer. I had no idea. Remember, we did this uh, Mike Mensa fucking deal. We fucking decided upon one fucking for a week for like two months. We did the lot. We did like warm up and the, the last rep thing. That was through hell. It was a like hell on earth. Jesus Christ, that one rep, which is like, did it, and then one rep or two, maybe, you know, forced. Wow, that was magnificent. Now, the important thing is, is this. The way I see things is this. I'm thinking, you know what? How many people, I mean, a community of people, like a town or a city, I'm in the gym, it's like, 
no one there. And, I, and, I, and there's someone's in the gym going, oh, hey, Simon, oh, what are you doing? Uh, oh, do, 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 do. And I'm not, I'm not doing too well. I said, you're not doing too well, but guess fucking what? You're fucking here every fucking day, my friend. We're in a community of like 10,000 motherfucking people plus. But guess what? Who's in the gym? Fucking you. You're here. You're approving. You're doing what you can do. So who's there's a fucking problem? It's going on you. You know what I mean? It's just you and I. I remember shouting across the gym saying, it's you and me. And she looks at me and goes, what? It's just you <laughs> fucking you and me. We're a population of fucking half a million people. It's just you in the fucking gym. It's that old brotherhood and sisterhood of iron. It, it is, it is. It was so it's, strong back then. It was so strong. The camaraderie. Hey, 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 you know what? It's genderless, relig yes. religionless. Yes. It's colorless. It's everything less. It it's is not everything less. Absolute soul, spirit, regardless of, of, of anything, any ethnicity, color, religion, anything. It's all uh, it's absolute. You know, you don't get bad in that, man. No. You don't can't get bad in that connection. Are just people together. Are just people, humans on this fucking small blue planet, lifting and heaving and enjoying the fucking world, man, just to get the shit done. I received a message just today saying exactly yeah. that. Paul. Whoever it was who sent it, I'm living in Africa. He said, I'm hearing all sorts of things about the UK, about when your footballers are kneel kneeling down to the anthem, they're getting booed. He said, I don't know, I don't know what to believe when I hear all that. But he said, All I do know is when I go into the gym, we're all brothers and sisters. There is nothing, there is nothing that separates us. We're all yeah. the same. Yeah, but yeah, but nobody, nobody even can sit. No, you know what? No one considers anything about. No, no we don't. I and mean, you know what? I, 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 no, we don't think about it. But it's really good to. Uh, we have, we have, we do have some problems with music. Gotta say, music. Because uh, I do yeah, too. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, but now nah, we do. Because you get other people from other fucking countries coming and say, "Well, I want this, or I play this, or I play that." Like, oh, yeah, I don't want this. You know, so we always are oh, giving over the music that we played, you know, because heavy metal is always good. Yeah. But no, no it's interesting. It's interesting, uh, Paul, you say this about the gyms. About gyms, when they, you, we don't see we don't see any difference among amongst us, you know, there's no difference. And uh, I'm international. I go to many, many places in my life. I travel the world. What I find interesting. You're a super superstar. Yeah. You're a superstar. Oh. You're a superstar. No. Of course, you travel the world. No, no, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a superstar. Yeah, come on. A very bad one. Hey, hey. But uh, it's interesting because I'm thinking I'm an air, I'm a Heathrow Airport, right? And I've got I'm mixing with people from all over the fucking world, from every ethnicity. Every color, religion, um, sexuality, uh, sexual preference. I don't fucking know. But you know what? No one has a fucking problem. No. No one has a problem. I sit at a bar with everybody from Arabia, fucking Israel, fucking Mexico, fucking America, fucking Canada. I'm sitting with, and no one has a fucking problem. No. There's politicians, and no, the politicians and shit. Divide because yeah. you know what we love nothing but to meet each other from every fucking country and <clears throat> all, all different types we don't care come on we're, we're massive fucking huge the small blue planet man and and uh, i meet everybody from all over the world and great conversations you know i love it i adore it but guess what if the world what if the world has a problem how come they're not fighting in the airports they're not no, and they're not, they're not fighting at the bodybuilding show. They're hanging out all together. you got all yeah. different people all over the world, different religions, different colours, different blah, 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 all hanging the fuck out. Yeah. No, it's a fucking problem. And what, what's the basic etiquette in a gym? 
you respect every other member as you would like to be respected yourself. That's a basic gym etiquette. Why yeah. can't we do that outside the gym? Why do we forget yeah. what we do inside the gym? It's like, yeah. Yeah. it's crazy. Like the world of the gym is a, is a refuge. It is an escape for people, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't really need to be that. Except, except the iron. There's something magical about the iron. There is lifting weight, the clang of the weight. There is something magically musical about the clangs of the weights. Mm. It's physical. It's physical. But so, uh, so how do you feel about? Um, I mean, how do you how do you approach things now? as far as your, your, your training goes? Well, obviously, you know, um, I had, um, I had a, an accident 10 years ago, a set of stairs collapsed underneath me and, um, and um, broke both, both my, my hips and uh, mess, messed up my pelvis pretty bad. Um, so, um, you know, my training is limited in terms of, um, you know, my lower body, but I'm in there. I'm in there four days a week and I still train. You still, you're, you're I still, still train. jerk off. You know what? You I, 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 no, 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 I, I, I can't, I can't go down that route anymore. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe once, once, twice a year, I might do some HRT. No, so can you still jerk off? Can I still jerk off? <laughs> use some HRT. It's a joke. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I can. Everything's fine with the HRT. It <laughs> solves all problems, man. <laughs> hey, actually, that's another funny thing. When I retired from... from oh, Canadian, yeah, it's another thing for you. It's a funny for everybody else. Okay. Go on. When I retired from competing, I came off of all the drugs, just the way Dorian did. I went cold turkey. I said to myself, yeah, yeah, I've, I've retired today. Yeah, I've retired today. I stopped taking everything. And I did, I stopped taking everything. I had about maybe six to eight weeks where I felt a little bit lethargic. Libido was a bit low, didn't feel too great, a little bit down. I've done what? I've done what? So right. you stopped doing what? I stopped doing uh, all, all the gear I was doing, all the anabolics, all the all, all the supplementation that goes along being with the top with the top bodybuilder. You know, I just came off yeah. everything completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. And um, and I, I would say about 12, 12, 15 weeks after being everything out, out of my system, my own natural testosterone levels, I felt them kick in naturally straight away. Oh, really? Within, oh, really? within six okay. weeks, I felt absolutely brand brand normal again. Absolutely perfect. I felt brilliant. It's really strange, you know. But then again, I was always cautious with those, you know, things. Like I always took minimal amounts and cycled very carefully. Look, I had some great advisors. I had Kerry Case, I had Dorian Yates, you know, advising me how to do things and how what not to do. So you know, that, that aspect of me, I feel very fortunate in having great mentors with. But yeah. at the end of my career, I knew I had to almost like reinvent myself. I was no longer Paul Baxendale, the bodybuilder. I had to become something new. It was like, it was like being an actor, playing a different role for a while. I thought, okay, I have to become something else now for a little bit, little bit of time. So I'll become an academic. So I went to university. Got, got two degrees, history, history, literature, just about to do a PhD now, but I still love training. Man. And I, yes, I still train. Heavy is a relative word. I, 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 try, I do one working set still, always just one working set, and I'll always get around about 10 reps. I'll, I won't go below eight reps. I'm just too, I'm too scared of doing myself any damage. So, um, but I'll make them good reps. Like I'll make those reps. My 10 reps will probably be worth 
20 reps of anybody else. I will squeeze and contract the hell out of the fibers till they're completely exhausted. Um, I might even do like a, like a rest pause. I might even try just hold the weight in place for as long as I can, just squeezing the muscles in, you know, in contraction, in that contracted position. Um, so, you know, I'm hold, holding hold, it together. Hold you there, hold you there, hold you there. I was doing a Smith machine uh, uh, um, press, chest press. And you did the thing where you said, well, push it, hold it. Mm. Is it, is it doing anything? Fucking right. You're holding the contraction. Yes. People don't get that. Hold the contraction. Because it's about, you remember, you remember the dynamics? What's that fucking motherfucker who did the um, uh, dynamo mechanics? Dynamic tension? dynamic tension? No. No, no, the early days. But were they like, they're comic books. Dynamic tension. Dynamic tension, yeah. It was. Yeah, what's his um, name? Oh. They come. What's his fucking name? It's fucking uh, dynamic tension. It was fucking right. Early kinesthetics, in effect. Yes, yes it was. Um... Uh, Atlas. Oh, what was his fucking name, Paul? Come on, they can't be a huge magazine empire. He was the leader of yeah. uh, Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas? No. Oh, was what's it? his name? Fucking name. Oh. I, I, I actually subscribed to it. I did you really? <laughs> did yeah. It didn't work out, did it? You know, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Was it? What's his name? Charles something. Charles something. Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas. Charles Atlas. Oh, oh, God. God. Yeah, I did this. This. All that shit. But dynamic tension. Yeah. Perfect. Because it's true. He's, he's way ahead of his time, Paul, because it is kinetics. Kinetics like the or yoga in effect. Yeah. You hold. Now, now, to your point, Paul, Holding the tension. That's what it was. You have to understand how, listen, anybody's listening now, the stretch and the contraction. Don't go this. Don't do this. Just just pull. Now, that that, uh, that guy we're talking about, um, uh, the French French bodybuilder, what's his name? Serge Debray. Serge Debray. Light. Lift it slowly, you know. It's like there's some guys. It was like the religious act. It's religious, religiously moved. Hold, press, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Come down, relax. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you see everybody in the gym. They're moving away from A to B. That's not what's important. What's important is what happens between A and B. Yeah. Yes. That's what happens between A and B. And that's what I always try and tell people. But I've got to say, the problem I find with a lot of young people today is, strangely, it's almost like they don't, they don't want advice. It's like, in my day, when I was young, I, like... I, I literally hung around the big guys of the gym trying to pick up little snippets of information here and there. It's like, yeah. th these young kids of today, it's almost like they know it all. They, they've watched a few YouTube videos or they're following their favorite Instagram <laughs> superstar model um, board short competitor and they've got it all sus, but you see them making basic mistakes and you know they're not going to make improvements. And all I want to do is help them make improvements. And it's like they won't let you. It's just like, ah, it's frustrating. Yeah, because we're set off fucks. What do we know? <laughs> because the way we perceive us has been a nosy, parkery, kind of, you know, they know better. Because we're youthful and, 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 you know, yeah, I don't know. I think, um, yeah, forget about it. It's not going to work. So I think the new age of individuals <clears throat> don't, have, don't know how to suffer because suffering is not a good thing. 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'll, well, I'll well, we could be, I could be wrong. 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 Yes, okay, I'll, I'll give you a couple of quite examples. Clearly, quite clearly, because I want to go back altogether differently. Let's step back altogether differently. Is, is for example, so you sure you're going to say? I was just going to say, I've taken three, three people have asked me to train them. And I've said, okay, I'll train you. But the first, the first session has to be a leg day to see whether or not you're up for it. Every single one, every, so every, every one of the three was sick. One didn't make it past the first exercise. One of them didn't make it past the leg press. The third one completed the workout, but was sick and had to lay down for half an hour afterwards. And he, he never wanted to train with me again. That's the difference between 1990s and today. So why did you say like, you know, it's okay, it's fine. So you can't. Maybe try again and come back tomorrow. Fuck them. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my gym. You can't do it. You can't do it. No. Listen, it's very simple. You lift, you pull, you push. Heavy shit. You can't do it. You can't do it. So don't come back. Unless you want to achieve, you have to have some, you have to have some kind of goal. What, what do you want? What do you fucking want from this? Now, that brings a kind of a loop into absolute dedication and where people become champions and uh, are that good. And it's not, not just simply lifting weights up and down. It become, it's about extraordinary, extraordinary people, extraordinary minds, and, and power of mind and spirit and soul. And uh, to achieve comes from dark places or will for you know, just pure uh, want of celebrity and, and self-worth, which is all the same thing, one of the same thing. And so, uh, you know, we have great, great people, you know, great champions, you know, and we have to reflect on those. You don't get there unless it's through hard work. Even if you're genetically gifted immensely, you're still going to fucking do the work to get there. It's called work. Guess what? Young people work. Yeah. Don't get it for free. Don't you know, get it for free. It's fascinating. Again, it doesn't matter what field you're in. Those people who are prepared to go beyond anything else anybody else is prepared to go through, they attract the world. The world is attracted to these champions, not particularly because they love the sport, not because they're particularly into athletics or whatever it may be, they recognize something innate within their spirit that is great. They, they recognize greatness in their spirit. It's more than the physicality. It's the mental drive and desire that they know has pushed them beyond anything anyone else is capable of. Yeah. It's like your artwork. How, how long have you suffered over a, a piece of art? How many times, let me ask you this, how many times have you started out on a piece of work, made one mark with a pencil and said, mm, no, that's not right. Try it again. One, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. You. Maybe you go through 10, 15, until you get that perfect stroke of the pencil. It's not good enough. It has, you know, you know, somewhere inside of you, you know what that perfect line is, that perfect mark. It comes the first time. If it doesn't come the first, doesn't come the first time, it's no good. which is exactly what you're talking about. I have a sketchbook full of paper and the wrong, 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 then I get it right. 
Then I get it right. So, um, so we're talking about like, uh, you know, bodybuilding and all. It's, it's an, another art. It's a movement, a dance, a, a piece of uh, literature, writing, poetry. It is that. It's an emotion. And uh, you have to really feel it and understand it and know it to attain, don't you? And it takes hard fucking work. Things become, uh, things are natural. But if it's not, sometimes if people are not very natural to it, they take it for granted. That, yes. but, don't, but, but don't succeed because it's natural and they don't, they don't see the potential. So I don't know what it is. There's a combination of being, um, I don't know. I mean, if we go back to Don to Yates again, who's this guy? Who is he to become ultimately to, to destroy uh, California, Los Angeles bodybuilding scene in a cold, dark, fucking rainy place? What was in, what was inside him that made what he was? You know, in cold, dark, <laughs> wintry. Birmingham city center. Uh, I, yeah. I remember he said to me one day after, after training, we were talking about the Olympia coming up. Uh, and he said to me, Paul, the only person who can beat me is, <laughs> is Flex Wheeler. Oh yeah, Flex. Flex Wheeler, but oh, he oh, never oh. will. Mm. But he never will. No, because no. his mind, his mind isn't strong enough. My mind is stronger than his. He knew his yeah. Flex Wheeler's genetics were better than Dorian's, but Dorian knew he would never beat him because Dorian's mind was stronger. Okay, okay. Uh, in, in, uh, not that you're not not that you're attacking uh, Mr. Yates, but uh, with regard to him, regard and respect to him, man. I don't. I'm not. I've, I've not seen more grainy detail, no. vascularity, and detail and size. But also that fucking latis, latissimus dorsi. Come on, <laughs> yes. I've never seen a lat, lat that pushes through the chest. He didn't. Have a, I, don't, I don't think Dorian's chest was that great. But the spread, the line. The uh, uh, the aesthetic the aesthetics perfection. See these are the, these are the really these the are the line. line it's, 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 what do you call it? It's, it's called Paul. It's the outside line. Trace a line around yes. the physique. Trace yeah. a line. Come on, look, look at Arnold. Trace a line, but look at look at Dorian. Perfection. Built. Constructed through fucking hard graft, hard work. Good English hard graft. Look at it. Magnificent. It's brilliant. I love it. And he constructed it very analytically. He literally, at the start of the year, he took his physique and he looked at where he wanted certain yeah. places to have half an inch extra bus. I'll tell you something about Dorian's back. Dorian's first pro show was the night of the champions and he got beaten he got beaten by mohammed ben aziza and he got beaten on his back now the next what? year he goes back beat dorian's back so for the next year dorian put a photo of momo's back on his fridge stuck his a photo on his fridge so every day he got a reminder that he had to double down and make his back better than Ben Aziz's, better than everyone's on the planet. And he did it in one year. He started to train heavier with underhand barbell rows. He started to contract harder. He rested more. He rested smarter. He trained harder. And his back became the greatest ever back I think we've ever, ever seen in bodybuilding history. But it became out of a defeat. Yeah, but so where where is he now? With Dorian. Yeah. Dorian's in Spain. I think he 
I think he spends most of his days, I think he cycles most days up into the mountains. I think he does yoga in the morning. Um, I think he's focusing on his health, keeping himself healthy and happy. Um, I, 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 I think he's, he's way more positive than most. What I like about Dorian is Mr. Yates again. I'm sorry. Uh, I, he's not my friend. I don't know the <laughs> but I can't the first name. Um, yeah, he's uh, way more realistic. What he, what he, it's interesting because he became absent. When he became famous and was Mr. Olympia, he went off the charts and disappeared. Yes. Because, because you know what? He wasn't playing the Hollywood game. He wasn't playing the I am the fucking man. Da -da. He just took it stoically. I won, I trained, and then I'm now I won, and that's my goal. And like Hollywood going like, and nothing. I did more what he had to do. Dorian did what he had to do and drifted away. He wasn't interested. Well, that's you know, it. He, uh, had a, he had a lot of pressure. So, he had a, so, he had a lot of pressure from Joe Weeder to fly over to LA twice I don't know. a I year don't, for photos. I don't know. He did. I don't know. I do know. And yeah, but Joe Dorian, Weeder, but yeah, but Dorian. But okay. Dorian didn't want to do it. Dorian wanted to stay at home and focus on his training. So you know, you know, you know he, he didn't yeah. want that LA lifestyle. Now, what, what I understand from Dorian, sorry, Mr. Yates again. I, I, I doubt they listen to us, but no, I don't. Uh, don't listen to, maybe you will. <laughs> but but you yeah, trust trust me. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, uh, Mr. Dorian Yates. Uh, again, I'm not interested in particularly. Well, like that were a day, but he do study shit. And uh, what I gather from him is that he couldn't be asked with it, couldn't be bothered with it. He doesn't want it, doesn't need it, doesn't doesn't understand it. Exactly. And um, so, 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 when you're a stardom celebrity and da da da, I'm not interested. So what? Oof. No, no, no interest. Not at all. And um, that's him altogether. That's why he's been kind of like brushed under the under the fucking rug in a way, because he's not he's not prepared to. He did what he did, he ruled, he destroyed, fucking absolutely destroyed. But he didn't play the game. Everybody. And, what? He didn't play the game. He didn't do the no, he didn't play the game. No, no, because he because he, 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 he's super straight up. Yeah. He's a proper geezer, Absolutely. a lad. He's a, one of the boys. He's one of us. One and of that, us. That's why I he respect was, him so much. He fucking conquered, destroyed. He, he destroyed, he destroyed him every year. Yeah, yeah. Turned up. I, I don't think. I don't, I, boom. <laughs> yeah, hey, he, he's he's such a good, cool dude. He's fucking super cool. He's alright. <laughs> oh. Okay, so, so, so how was your pun? Sorry, I was, I was just going to say, so we, we've got end of the month, we're going to get some training in. Are we going to do this? Um, I yeah. don't know. So what's your, what's your general kind of training regime? My general training regime is pretty much... No, no, what, 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 can I say something? Sure. I think what Mr. Yates did was show it as it is. Show it really what it really is the truth of it just hard blood and guts to attain what you have to attain to get to where you are without bullshit stardom and all this fucking bloody dark trying to be cool and there he was a pure he was a it was a very essence and purity of what bold bodybuilding is yeah. to the finite science the working man's did, bodybuilder. Was that any bullshit? Any fucking trying to put people, you know, and, uh, you know, in this celebrity shit and uh, bullshit. No. He ruled. He was will. We were getting the it's, Flex magazine and we were, we were seeing the guys in, in LA. They were training in LA in, in their sunglasses, on their phones, doing, doing leg extensions. And I'm thinking... 
if you only knew what what it was like in Temple Gym doing a leg session, you wouldn't yeah. have your sunglasses on. You wouldn't have your phone anywhere near you. You you'd be you'd be lucky if you were even hoping to survive this morning. <laughs> it was like chalk and cheese. It was opposite worlds. It was LA sunshine. Okay, okay, oh, I will. Glitz. Well, I will. I will. I will. I'm open to the challenge. I'm uh, 60 years old, so <laughs> someone can I have a fucking last session. Hey, Doran Yates, you want to challenge me? <laughs> I'm going. I'll go. I'll go. I'll fucking go. Hey, no, no. I, I, no, no, no. Joke. No, no. No, no, no I don't joke. Because I'm joking. Come on, you're joking yeah, me. You know. No, but. We've got to have some fun with this thing. You know, that's the thing. We can't. We yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. have some fun with this thing. But who is there? I know, but who's the legend? Is it Arnold? Or, or Dorian? Who's the legend, really? In, in the real guts of the world? Yeah. Or, uh, who's or got Coleman? Who's got mystique around them? Yes, yeah, so I'm saying. So, mm. no, so, no, I'm talking about the depths of it. Who who's prepared to go that dark? Okay, uh, uh, this is the thing. Listen, as an amateur, I see sixty year old fucking. I don't give a shit, fucking guy, kind of guy. Who's more important? Who's relevant? More relevant? Now, you have all together juxtaposed opinions and styles. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Dorian Yates. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who was there? Who's really there? Who's worth looking at and discovering? You know what I mean? It's personality, Arnold's natural personality and genetics, natural genetics, or blood and absolute fucking guts. Yeah. Someone prepared to push it that fucking hard to get better. And also, interesting enough, Dorian Yates is denied publicity. There's not that much uh, promoted in a, in a, in a bodybuilding fraternity in no. California. Do you know what I mean? No. In those circles. Come on. You should meet. Really? Come on. He's denied perfection because he was perfect. Perfect. And he, he, he opened a whole different fucking... He, hey, he grabbed the Bible, opened it, and built another page all together said, let's fucking go. But I think because... Um, it's, I don't think he's accepted even now because he just busted the world wide open and no one can touch him. That's interesting. I, That's what I think. A few years ago. I see, I see, I see, Paul, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you. That's okay. I see modern, modern, I don't know Mr. Yates, don't know him. I don't know his, but I see what I see. I see what I see. And even today, I ain't seen it. I ain't seen no, no one could touch him. Even now, even the modern day uh, bodybuilders, yeah, no. Mr. Olympias, Dorian could blow the, the fuck away. Destroyed. I ain't saying Dorian. Nope. I ain't saying it. Sorry. I remember a few years ago, it was at a Mr. Olympia contest. They showed a, a short film of all the old Mr. Olympias. The clip of Dorian's was probably half as long as everybody else's. They literally wiped over his career as though it was a blip, a blip in the in the history of Joe Weider's bodybuilding kind of empire. And I'm like, he, sh he should have had a he should have had an epic to himself. He redefined the limits of bodybuilding. I'm not seeing it, Paul. I'm not. I'm not seeing it. All the all the. Who's that guy from Holland? The one, one, you guy from Holland. Roly Winkler? I don't know. Is it from Holland? Uh, some guy. He looks amazing. He's from Holland. Roly, Roly's from Holland. Originally, I think. You've got to send me a picture. What's his fucking name? I but he's some young guy. I, <laughs> I competed against him Thanks. in the WBF in about 2004. Oh. I think. <laughs> Super wide fucking what's his fucking name? Jesus, I, I, I don't know. Oh, actually, no, he's not as thick as. Now the thing is, I'm not okay. 
what I would say is I've not seen the thickness, the depth, the detail that Yates had achieved that anyone, anyone else has achieved since. The detailing. I've not I seen that. I've not seen the detail. It's the grainy, I'm not the grainy it. hardness. No, it's I'm not. The grain, the grain, they get absolute thickness. It was like mm -hmm. rock hard. I remember, I remember seeing him two weeks, two weeks out from the Olympia, and you could almost see the blood running through his veins. His skin was so thin; it was like rice paper. It was, it was like that Frankenstein on the cover of Mary Shelley's frontispiece from 1831. The skin was so thin, so pale, like rice paper. And the veins, you could almost see blood running through his veins. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. Yeah, but yeah, but that's only the, the polish at the end. You know. So I don't know. I don't know how this shit goes. Maybe he's remarkably... Uh, how's his son? How's uh, Yates' son? Is I don't he really still know. I, I mean, I, I kind of... Um, I, I knew him a little bit when he was young, when he was kind of like 10, 11, but I, I, he's a grown man now. I guess he's probably in his in about 30 now or something. He, he runs Temple Gym in Birmingham now, but in a different location. They changed the location. So uh, Lewis right. uh, now runs the new Temple Gym. Um, and um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know him. I've, I've nev never, never met him as, as, as an adult, um, but... As an adult. Yeah, as, as an adult. But, Hello. I'm, I'm, I'm Paul Baxter down. I'm fucking uh, 50. Yeah, yeah. 55. <laughs> I remember you when you were a kid. I remember you were two. And now I'm fucking <laughs> Remember me? Yeah. So, so, Paul, now, but but now you become like altogether different, all altogether different. You become like a, 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 a you have a, percept, a professorship. You're an, an, an intellectual and a writer, and uh, and uh, you were uh, you're a philosopher. I, I you, do write. I, I write and you're a philosopher. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I I, I, I love reading. I, I I'm a big fan of Stoicism. I I personally found that the philosophy of Stoicism really helped me through my accident and my rehabilitation into a new a, a new persona um the, the kind of the concept that you can't you can't affect the events that happen to you in life but you can affect what your response is to those events in life so the fact that i fell through those stairs i couldn't have helped that but my reaction to falling through the stairs, I can affect that. So I, I decided to make that into a positive. And so, yes, a, a positive, I'll go to university, I'll get a degree um, in history, I'll get a degree in literature, I'll become educated, I'll, I will learn things that I didn't know before, I will try and become someone who knows more than they previously did, hopefully, so I can live life better and I can maybe try and help other people don't make the same mistakes I made in life because I made plenty, you know, and I, I would rather other people didn't make those. So what, what do you think that, um, so what do you think of modern, mo modern bodybuilding? Modern bodybuilding. I've, I've no, 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 no. We're talking about, okay, Paul, we're talking about the grain, graininess of Dorian, which has not been matched, I don't think, particularly. Uh, so, how do, you, how do you see, I mean, you, you know, the whole uh, uh, growth hormone, fucking big, wasted, fucking Palumbo shit going on. Where's it going? Where's not, in good, going? not in a good direction, I don't think. I, I, I've, I've seen a real decline in the quality of physiques. I would say probably since 
about 2015 onwards, um, may, maybe even before then, some, some of the athletes were pushing the boat for sure in, in terms of the, the growth hormone and, and the insulin and possibly IGF-1. Um, now, these are compounds which, which really cause, you know, incredible growth, but they make everything grow. They make your organs grow as well as your muscles. So you're going to get ex distended abdominals. You're going to get water under the skin. I can always tell an athlete who uses too much growth hormone because they always hold a layer of subcutaneous water under their skin, which no matter how much diuretics they take, they, they will never be able to get rid of it. It's just, it blurs. It blurs the details that you were talking about the grainy details, you, you won't see it in an athlete who uses too much growth hormone. And um, I, 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 wish, I wish the judges would alter the judging criteria. If the judges started to reward the harder athletes, the ones who are really in shape, then people would soon change their protocols. But because... Yeah, but because they're rewarding the athletes who are the biggest, then I think it's telling them the message, we want you bigger. It's yeah, got yeah, to come yeah, from yeah. the judges. Yeah, it's yeah, got yeah, to come yeah. from the judges. Surely, but maybe in being bigger and more in shape. I mean, the thing is, if there's a back history, it doesn't matter. It's about what you present in front of you. Like a great artistic piece or a great movie or great whatever it is. So what is presented of you is it. So how it came about and how it was perceived and conceived, how much money was put forward, is it work or not work? So you say, well, the guy's very huge, but oh, but God, he did this and that. And yeah, so we so we did. about what you can fucking do. Yeah. It, like, just like that brotherhood and sisterhood of iron, it's got nothing to do with anything but the iron. It, it's what unites us, not what divides us. Yeah, it unites right. us as a human species, as human individuals who are connected anyway. We're all connected in some capacity. Let's unite. Awesome, yeah instead of divided the society around us today try and find ways to divide us all look at the way bodybuilding is is going there dividing classes into like the board short class and then the classic physique class the under 212 class the over 212 you've got so many classes why not just get the best bodybuilders on stage who's the best who wins <laughs> yeah. well ultimately that I mean, it's like with Arnold and Arnold and Colombo, Colombo. Yeah. And they, Colombo was good, but guess what? Uh, Arnold was taller, more magnificent, and you're, 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 you're a fucking hobbit. You're small. Yeah. A great big man but, would always be a great smaller man. But, but, but if you, if you shrunk down Arnold alongside Colombo, <laughs> Colombo's chest would be yeah. one of the best chests. Uh, that that split uh, that, that Columbo, that, one of the best that, chest in the entire world. in his chest. Oh man! Oh no! I don't like that. Crazy. It's hard, hard as shit. No, it's amazing. So amazing. So how much how much bodybuilding is is in your characters? Is it in your art? All now, of it. All are of they it. all bodybuilders? Are they all bodybuilders? They are. And, you know, there, there, there's also parts of you in there. Like, when, when, I, when I see Lobo, when I read Lobo, I, I see parts of Biz. I, I, I read parts of you in there, and I'm like, that's part of you in that. That's part of your DNA in that, in that character. That absolutely is part of your DNA in that character. Of course it is. Yeah, totally. That's what I said. Uh, uh, I was looking for, you know, influence and ideas for my work. And, um, you know, so uh, trying with you guys was pretty fucking intense. So, yeah, it works. It works for me. 
you know, it's like a resource. For, yeah, what for me? Totally. Yeah. But it worked both ways. What? It worked both ways because we, we, I had your artwork on my wall in the gym that was inspiring us to train even harder because we were looking at your art. We were looking at your characters. We, we were looking at, um, who was it? Was it, what character was it who was fighting the Jaguar with a woman? Jaguar with God. Jaguar God. I don't know. You don't know. I, I do. I, I do. I, who was it? I don't fucking remember. Um, well, I remember. I, I was looking at it today. And I was thinking, oh man, that's just cr that is just crazy, unbelievable. Um, it, it it wasn't Conan, was it? It wasn't. No, 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 no. It might have been Conan with a huge axe and a Jaguar was jumping on him and there was a woman down on the floor by his knees. Do you remember that? That was a real early piece. Yeah, probably every character I've ever done. Very early piece, classic, absolutely classic. And have you, have you ever drawn old King Conan yet? No. No? Any plans to? Yeah. You want to be? Yeah. But you got to grow a beard. You got to grow a beard. <laughs> a beard, okay. No, I, that'd be cool. No, grow a beard, grow your I think hair. That'd be cool, man. I, 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 think, I think there has to be a, a <laughs> sequel. There, there has to be no, a... No, what, 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 you, you got to... Yeah, no, I don't know. I don't know. I think Conan probably died early. I don't think he would. He, he was that old. I, don't know. I think he would have got to. There's no chronic age. There's no chronic. He would have got to late middle age, and and then maybe he would have. There would have been young usurpers trying to take him out. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, most of his Conan. Most of his uh, sagas were, were in his 20s and 30s. Yeah. He's young. Conan is ethereal and important kind of a, a map for us. Because it, it, it was quality. He was written in the uh, very early 19th century by Robert E. Howard. But Conan was a uh, very stoic and a uh, very fine fellow. And uh, had great honor and uh, respected yes. women and respect. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was a fine. It, it was. It had all the. Uh, a very noble fellow, actually. He's a ruffian, um, a bully yeah. in a sense. So but, um, no, so he didn't. He, 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 he wasn't a rapist or anything, or a fucking a bastard. You know, he was. He's okay. You know, so it's quite progressive in a way, but. Um, Oh, good. I advocate all. I advocate Conan. Conan's amazing. Yeah, he I was not gentleman. He's just a fucking guy. Yeah, he's yeah. all right, man. He did he's, shit, you know. He's just a character that you you just know he has those basic stoic values of kind of honor and virtue, and. Just nothing could sway that man. He's rock solid in his beliefs and his values. He, he wouldn't change them for any anybody. He would he would rather die, you know, on, on the blade of a sword than to submit to anything less. Yeah, but but wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. I would die for my yeah, values. But, would, but wouldn't you? Yeah, I know I would. Mm. I've been there life and um yeah but um yeah 
Conan, amazing. Yeah. Good old stuff. Great, great new stuff. Maybe, maybe he's going to resurface and have a few more adventures. I don't know, because wasn't, Ar wasn't, Ar wasn't Arnold going to do a fucking thing with... Um, I think he had a deal with some with with some movie company to do King Conan, and he would be it'd be him. Oh, I think I did read something about well, that. So, so, so apparently, apparently, someone who still holds the rights to the Conan um, movie rights. Okay, but they hold it back. You know. Ah, yeah. So I think so. Yeah, I gathered. So what about any of your other work? Is is that well, yeah. any, more of it looking, any other stuff looking towards movies? Do you get involved in that process or that? For me? For me? Yeah. Oh, all the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, stuff, stuff, stuff I can't talk about. Yeah, but yeah. yeah sure. Pretty yeah. much. But do you like that? Is, is that uh, an, always, exciting yeah. I do like it. an exciting part of your business? To seeing things maybe coming into life on a on a screen. No, no, not unless you have <laughs> artistic and um, artistic control. <laughs> not right now, don't care. Don't care. I know. Hey, if I get through a few bucks, I'm happy. But I, I love the acknowledgement and uh, the glory of being, you know, represented and my work justified. I like, enjoy that a lot. Yeah, I do. But um, pretty much otherwise, like, yeah, the yeah. Right, life rolls on. Then. I mean, I, I, I guess this period of, of long lockdowns has, has, has kind of had quite an impact on many sports people. I know the Olympics are going on in Tokyo right now, but it, like there's no there's no crowds watching. It's like people are winning gold medals, and there's nobody there to applaud them. There's nobody there to acclaim their their victories, as it were. Um, you've not been able to get around to your normally to your normal conventions and stuff, and and that's where you meet your your family, your other family, your your cartoon family. You know the the ones who buy the comics and who love the artists, who love the the work and and not being able to be with those people that must be that must have been difficult too no no you quite oh, no, no no they, uh, yeah yeah pretty much yeah i mean i don't know it's a transition yeah you gotta accept what it is so why worry i mean there's not, nothing you can do about it no that's what you can do no. So, uh, what are you going to do? Worry Just keep about working. What? Just keep working. Well, don't worry. Yeah, I'll see, I'll see people when I see them. I mean, I've not met you uh, for like how many years? Yeah. I mean, oh, 25 years. Years and years and years. Face to face, so we don't want. Yeah. No, Be, I, he you, you just take things as, as they are. In the middle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. But it happens when it happens, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. I hope this podcast is, is good. Yeah, it will be. It was. It's. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun, Biz. We've covered a lot of material. I think we've 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 gone some really interesting places, and um, I think hopefully we provided some. We're not talking about. We're not. We're not talking about this. Now. Sorry. No, we're not talking about uh, the other shit. No, 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 no. The mythological. No, no, no. We we don't talk oh, about. Oh no, it. I'm saying that's next. that's next. Oh, that's next. No, the mythological Thor, Hercules. Remember? Yes. We're talking about that. Yes. That's next. All about all about the the, the ethereal, the spiritual, the rolling the, rolling the stone, and all the you know the mythological uh, characters of our yeah. of, of written a historian. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's something I've been fascinated with, especially the last, I would say, year and a half, is that exploring these myths, exploring these ancient myths and understanding maybe the, the lessons, the life lessons that, that these 
ancient writers were trying to teach us by, you know, Hercules' 12 labors or 12 tasks that he had to perform. And, um, you know, re really fascinating ones like, actually, it wasn't even one of his labors that he had to do, but um, the man who gave humans fire was somebody called Prometheus. The Greeks thought that this man called Prometheus gave humans fire. And obviously, to give humans fire when they didn't have it, that, that was like a civilization changing technology. Now, Zeus was so unhappy, was so mad with Prometheus because he'd given humans fire. He chained him to a rock. He chained him to a rock. But Prometheus was a god, so he couldn't die. But every day, this eagle would swoop down and peck and eat his liver out of his body raw while he was alive, living. And then during the night, he would obviously recover because he's a god, he can't die. Only for the next dawn, the eagle would come again and all day he would be pecking at his body, taking out his liver again. Until Hercules comes along, sees Prometheus chained to the rock, why are you chained against the rock? Oh, Zeus was, was mad with me because I gave humans fire. And Hercules breaks the chains and sets Prometheus free. So Hercules, he wasn't a god. He was just a, a mere mortal man to the Greeks. But he was, he was almost, he, he, he was, he was almost um, godlike to the Greeks, not because of his strength so much, but for his courage and for his virtue. That's what he was renowned for. It's, it's strange because we always associate Hercules with strength and like killing carcass and killing the wild beasts and the, um, the boar and the ox and all these animals. But actually he was renowned for his courage and his virtue. And, and I think that's, that's the message that they were trying to get across to us was that Strength is noble, it's great, and it's very good to be strong because you need strength throughout life. You come across occasions in life where you need strength to survive, but the most valuable thing you can have is virtue and courage. And, you know, th th these are lessons that, that I love to take from mythology. There's a whole heap of them, you know, it's like... Right, great. Norse mythology, you know, Thor, you know, with, with, with the magic hammer, the hammer that was made by the, by the dwarfs, magical powers, and they, they gave it to Thor. You know, all, all, these, all these different cultures have, have got these different gods, but they, they all have the same attributes in terms of their, their, their kind of their honor and their virtue and their honesty but you also have the the joker there's always a joker in in in, in the pack of gods whether it's loki or or whoever and um again i think it's kind of like a um archetypal reflection of society i guess, I guess uh, i guess like uh thor's hammer would strike it'll be like a nuclear fucking fission yeah That'd be like the whole fucking thing. Yeah. That I mean, like, uh, um, but it, it's, it's mythological, so it's a suggestion and a probable. So people have, have to be convinced. People will, will be have to be convinced that Thor existed, and his hammer would explode and create mountains and da da, which it did though. It did. To my mind, it did. Uh, Thor exists as much as uh, Jesus did, you know? I mean, how else did the Norse... In, in break out back. Yeah, how, how else did hmm? the Norse... No, no, to me, it's... it's mountains. No, 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 what no, one's trying to explain to you is there's a truism, because whether it be mythology or... It's an ideal. Mm. An ideal that yeah. I like... And I'll go along with because because of nothing else. What do you have else otherwise? We have 
ideology as, as individuals or we go where we go, if we go, how we see things. But as a personal level, I, I'm, I'm, I represent myself personally and I believe in uh, yeah, Thor. It sounds good to me. I like that. I like Jesus. I like his ideology. Yeah. So, you know, I mix them up. So I don't, I'm not particularly one or the other. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm very similar to that. So I'm, kind of, I'm a bit of a slut. I take what I can, what I can, that makes sense. But it's like every religious text or every mythological story that I've read, they've all got something valuable in them. Every single one yeah. has got something valuable in them. So why throw anything away? Why, why yeah, 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 yeah. You There's no reason to. We yeah, don't have to throw to, anything uh, to away. The, uh, yeah, yeah, but... I, 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 I know people of all kinds of religions, all, all, all kinds of religions, but it all came, comes down to the same kind of thing, kind of. Really? Yeah. Or it yeah, does, does, you know. I agree. I don't see a difference in nothing. You lift weights for me, I lift weights for you. I'll suffer, I'll suffer and sweat blood with you. And let's, let's go. Let's fucking lift the fucking weights. Let's yeah. fucking push our bodies. And it's that, a brotherhood. It's that's, a, a, that's a real brotherhood. kind of a bond is it, between it's two brothers. It's a beautiful it's a brotherhood. Bond. It's a brotherhood, a sisterhood, a worldly love. We don't give a fuck. Well, what nature you are, we don't give a fuck. Let's just yeah. fucking push. Let's yeah. fucking push. Let's fucking support each other and fucking pull and push and fucking yeah, scream. Yeah. It's a wonderful and world we've, bad. we've got this world of our iron. And we, we, we should the never... Gym. Be... The gym! Yeah, the gym. The gym, it's a it's a wonderful place. And it's, a, it's where, yeah, everybody should get on and everybody does get on. And we're blessed to have it. We're blessed to have no, it, man. No, no one cares. The gym is neutral. No one cares. No one's judges. Yeah. No. We've been left. It's like, it's like, it's like, uh, we can lift with wh whoever, with whoever. And we're not looking at anything. We're just, we're lift. Hey, we're we'll trying, we're we'll trying. I'm not looking at, I'm not judging, it's just trying. No. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but when I travel the world, I, I always, wherever I am in the world, whatever city or town I am, I always find the gym. And I always go and train in the local gym. And wherever I am in the world, I'm accepted like a brother. It's no, nothing else Great in unity. the world. I can't go into a bar or a cafe or a restaurant and have that, but I can go to the gym and everybody accepts me like a brother. Yes, they fucking do. A nod and a wink. Yeah. No one's judging. Yeah. Just Unity. Like I said, the airport. Go to the international airport, no one's judging. All together. It's government and politics divide us. But as people, man, we're not divided. No. Yeah. Maybe we should just but turn off the television sets, turn off the radios. All, I, all I'm going to do is get stronger and bigger. Yeah. More powerful. Okay, buddy. Well, um, come the end of the month, in my we'll, mind. we'll get some workouts in. I'm looking forward to that. It's, it's going to be great to work out with you again. And um, well, yeah, we'll get some. We'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get some footage for for everybody out there to, to see as two old uh, Iron Warriors, that'd the two funny. old Iron Warriors that'd training. That would be funny, actually. Yeah, it'll be yeah, funny training. Hey, but this I think it'll be pretty teacher. magical too. Hey, oh, it's, it's business revenge. <laughs> You will get your revenge. I'm, gonna, I'm, a, I'm a cripple now, I'm man. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna push you on. Hey, hey, we're the same age. Fuck off. I'm gonna push you. Okay, you're on. You're on. Oh, no. You're on. I wish I never said that. And, I, wish and, I, never, I wish I never said that. And I and I raise you three. Now, now we're in trouble. And I raise I you three, you three what, buddy. No, no, no. <laughs> so, I know you will. Uh, no, 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 no. I can't help it. I can't help myself. Wait, wait, wait.
And then, well, yeah, I know yeah, you scare me already. Listen, it's not about me it. pushing push me. I want you to scare the fuck out of the guys I train with <laughs> now. Okay. Like, okay. No. Hey, 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 hey. The, the, the tough, the local young tough guys, they, they now, trust me, they respect me, they love me. They love me, though. They do love me. They listen to me. But I said, uh, uh, Paul's going to come down. Paul? Oh, Paul, yeah. Paul's coming down. I told you, you're going to pay, you have pain and suffering. Oh, yeah, Paul, Paul, yeah. But he's coming down. And I told, I warned you, I told you, and you're going to punish them. You know what? I'll do as you say. I'll push and pull. I'll, it's I'll go to the depths. It's going to be an old school, but all the heavy people, duty, it, it, high intensity all, workout. Yes. All Guys, the guys own the guy Tim who owns the gym. The rest of them, Tim will, will put up with it. He loves it. He'll love it. And uh, let's see how the rest of the guys handle it because they, they don't know suffering. Let's see. They let's don't know out. the pain that Paul. Well, you're you're the you're the my, maestro of torture. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's not really a title I'm going to. Um... And you're lovingly, but um, I don't do it out of out of, out of, out of spite or um, I, I don't want to. I don't want people to suffer. I, I don't want to terrorize people. I want them to improve. That's what it is. All I want oh. to do is I want to make them improve. And I don't know what they've had in the past. I don't know what experience they've had in terms of training, but they will experience a real heavy duty, high intensity one set per exercise, workout to failure and beyond failure. And I don't think it'll be anything they've ever, ever experienced before. It's going to be fun. <laughs> For you. <laughs> For all of us. You're, you're going to love it as much as I am. <laughs> oh, no, I do all the time. I hate the bother me. Yeah. I, I don't bat at it. Now you're going to have fun watching them because you you you're going to know uh, they they're, they're they're never going to have experienced it before. They'll drop out, bro. They'll probably drop out. Maybe, but then you'll know, and they'll know you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll know. You'll know that I'll know. We'll know. Yeah, but I don't know though. But uh, it's because there's some guys there that. Um, quite open to it. I say, yeah, okay, Biz, you go do a chest workout. What happened? You didn't call me. I said, well, I said, oh. they're really enthusiastic about it. And they've really improved. They're young, but they really look good. They're looking kind of large, massive, you know, not massive, but they really improved a lot. But um, I don't know. What, what, what can I do? I mean, I don't know. But um, just show them, show them to, you know, Take it a bit more easy, you know, go a little bit lighter and just push it, pull it. Yeah. Religiously. Just feel the body, you know, that just sort of thing. Body work. Feel well, the man. muscles work and um we'll, we'll we'll get something sorted between the two of us. Um, you know, we'll 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 train together. Oh no, we'll, 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 um, with you, you and me and you and me you and me go to town. Yeah. You and me go to town. Maybe, maybe I need I'll... to get big one month. No, I train with you for four more months and I get massive. Yeah, and look, we're, we're, we'll head off for a few weeks, but then we'll come back. So I'll get a chance to train with you again, probably in September, and uh, before we head up to Scotland uh, again. So, and then when I'm up in Scotland, maybe, maybe, maybe we do this. Maybe we we zoom in and I keep an eye on your training, and we keep a log, and we and, and, we, get, and we get you in really good shape for really good shape for for later this I'm year. Sixty years. So, hey, hey, don't, hey, I'm 60 years old. Don't expect Man, a lot. Robbie, you know Robbie I mean? Robinson's yeah. in his 70s and he looks superb. Oh, There's yeah. No excuses, I, man. I'm not making excuses. You're the biz, man. I'm saying, don't, you're don't, biz. Come on. The, you that's are true. biz. You are the iconic biz. You are Lobo. Three more reps. Three, 
more reps. No matter what, no matter how long it takes, you get the three more reps. And that goes in anything in life. That's what I'm trying to tell people. Whatever you do, whatever trouble comes your way, because life throws suffering at people all the time through no fault of their own. You can stand it. You can, with, you can withstand anything because you've always got three more reps inside you. Always. I do. You know you I do. Have. You have. You've always had that. You had that the day you walked in my door. You already had it. You already had it. I knew it. That's, that's why there was that bond immediately. So I knew you already had that inside you. But there's other people who don't have it, and there are. we need we need to teach people yeah, that we train like for a year solid man, a year. Whew. Yeah, true. No, I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I've never expressed. I never expressed when I train with you, and uh, I never experienced anything close to that after nothing. Nothing. Well, you're looking really well. Nothing. Biz. You're looking great at the moment. So whatever you're doing at the moment, it's working. It's working. Whatever you're doing. I don't look great. I don't look great. How do you look great? Great. How can you tell? Because you're bigger and you're muscular. And what are you, 57 years old? 50, I don't know, 56, I can tell I'm wearing a top. You can tell. Yeah, you of course tell. you can tell. Look, look at your T-shirt. Look, I can see your guns hanging out of your... 60. Your sleeves. You're 60 years old. You've got guns hanging out of your oh. sleeves. Oh, Yeah. Oh, you know, man. it's like... Oh, come on. Yeah. Hey, 60. 60. Now, that's important, what you said. You're looking awesome. That's interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I wouldn't something. say that if I didn't mean it. The and you work, know that. The work... The work that I put in with you in the old days shows. If you put the work in, you put the work in, it will show in later life because you can't get rid of it. No, it won't fall it. off. If you're natural and you push it and you pull it and yeah. you get the shit done, it won't fall off because if you just sit around like a motherfucker and wait to get injected and they're all going to get big, you're fluffy and big, then the, the, then the shit goes out of your bloodstream and then you're back to where you were. Put exactly. the fucking work in. Day, exactly. day night. And it, yeah, this is the oh, what I have here was, you know, it's from hard fucking graft. It's suffering. And that's your fucking fault. My strength and power that I have. Yeah. Week in, week density, out. Den, den, density of muscle that mm. I, I possess is through through your your philosophy and through your d DNA, I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, yeah I'm from the DNA of, of, from you and from from Dorian Yates, Mister Yates. I'm an artist. I paint fine pictures. I paint delicate images on paper and paint. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist, but look at me, eh? I've got strength. Of, look at this. This doesn't come from nowhere. Where does it come from? Yeah. Yatesy. Yeah. It's a constant line, a constant uh, ripple of DNA. Back from, now. That's where it comes from. Constant it's, ripple of DNA. It, it's, it's a constant line. That's what I'm saying. So, 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 so Dorian Yates, the simple working class bodybuilder. Was part was part of my DNA to become one of the or one of the great fantasy comic book artists, mm. and with, with training with you, showed me transitioned me and, and pushed me forward. So, so that's my point, is that uh, you think you know? Okay, I was a great bodybuilder. I was Mr. Olympia. I Paul Baxendale was a great, great, a great bodybuilder. Had a how how had a had a fucking uh, his own fucking place and da da da. No, but Dorney Yates and uh, Paul Baxendale was made made me. Made was was part of my DNA. 
constructed my sense. When I drew Batman and all the superheroes, I saw Donnie Yates and Paul Baxter now. I saw the suffering and the bodybuilding and the, the things we had to get to construct our shapes. Wow, that's and bodies cool. and a mind, you know. I it's suffered. It's really quite important. Yeah, that's really quite important. What, really what quite you suffered, I suffered. To hear that. It's really kind, kind of taking me back to what? hear that because what? it's taking me back to hear you say that because I, I, I often... I often look at my life and I and 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 I and, and I kind of wonder or I wish I should have done so much more to help other people. I really should have I should really should have made more of an effort in so many different ways to help other people. And I and I still will and I still want to. And but you you never know what impact your your actions have had at any level. And I think that. Even a part of, of, of me has as, as impacted you in that way. It's, you know, that's, that's really quite moving. It, it, it's really hit me. It's enormously. Like I said, I, don't, I didn't, Paul, I don't, I knew you, but not that well, but I knew you. I, we, we suffered together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Suffered the cross in this. Yeah. In, in this, you know? And, um, and um, but for me, it was uh, I saw I saw um, you know um, Lee Haney and Platts all that thing. But when I saw that, when I saw uh, um, Mr. Yates training and shit, I said a whole different thing altogether. I got it. I saw it. Prepared to go that far to suffer, to suffer. For what reason? For what reason? Really? No real reason. Just to suffer, redemption to uh, make amends. It's I'm almost like a, the game, you know. Uh, yeah, just to go to to, to to fall to your knees and just say, you know what? Mm. Just like right, let's go. Let's fucking go. It's about self, self worth, self, self. It's punishing yourself and making yourself better to yeah. redeem. It's a redemption. I'm redemption. sure it is doing that. I don't know. I don't know Mr. Yates. I don't know you that well, Paul. Really, I love you, man, but I don't know you. I say I love you, Yates, for whatever reason I can't imagine. But I see it as a connection, you know. It's about put, pushing and pushing and pushing to find yourself and uh, go to war with the world, you know. And uh, big came out the other side, magnificent. And uh, the sun, sun shines brightly in all of you, you know. He did what he did, and he proved everybody, you know. But the, it's funny because everyone still suffers and tr still tries to be the best, you know. But um, I don't know. I think it's for me. It's from pure, pure British blood and guts. Mm. Again, sunshine of California, <laughs> and the and yeah. the good, good, but against, you know, that's what it is. It's very matter of fact and simple. It's, it's simple. honest. It's honest. Simple. And uh, yeah, so we sit back and say, yeah, well, what? Um, what I find Paul, Mr. Uh, Mr. Baxendale and Mr. Yates, is why in particular, uh, yet yeah, was what dismissed, not really regarded or not publicized. You know what I mean? But we're absent from the, you know, the, the great giant publicity. They were like, weren't there. Do you know what I mean? Mm. They won, but <laughs> they were publicized. No. There was no big check waiting for me. <laughs> you <pay that. laughs> no, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's like, um, where, where were the film deals, you know? Where the, <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of policy that may, may, uh, politics and may, manipulation that, uh, you know what I mean? I guess there is. Well, I was never interested. Why in, was it like, I was example, never interested like, in the politics <laughs> of it all. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to train. That's all I wanted to do, just train. Yeah, but what was it? Why, 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 why
why weren't you and uh, Yates in like, like in starring in fucking movies? It's like Terminator or something. I think it's all together. You, you, you guys are just a mystery. a mystery, all too much for people to take. There's such an absolute honesty with you guys that they Hollywood couldn't fucking understand it. Maybe or maybe we push ourselves forward and other people did. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but why was why, why didn't he age get lots of movie propositions? I've got no idea. Again, maybe he didn't push himself forward or maybe he just didn't want it. Or, But you would have thought he would have been offered something. I don't know. I don't think he probably cared. No, I don't think he did. He's very, no. <laughs> very chill with it. You know, you know, he's. Uh, he's yeah. How would you? I, again, I, I, I don't know Dorian now. I, 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 I can't say I, I don't know him now. The last time I messaged him was probably a, a, maybe a year ago, and you know, I, I send him a message maybe once every six months to every year just to see how he's doing, and, and we keep in touch like that, and. To me, he seemed happy. He was he was cycling every day. He was oh. living in Spain. He had a sunny climate. He had a great tan. He was healthy. He was doing yoga. He was eating really clean. He was almost vegan with his with his nutrition. Um, but he was still a big man. It's like the muscles didn't drop off him. It was like he was still big. Um, but he was happy, you know. Yeah. How, how could they? How could they? How could they? Yeah. Yeah, those muscles were never going to drop off Dorian. <laughs> Not all of them. He's still oh, a no. big man. Still a big man. Oh, I watch him on. Uh, I watch him on um, the whole thing. So it's, it's so good to me, you know. I'm... Mm. Oh no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, just don't, I just don't think that um, he's been bettered. No. No, I don't. That's what. I don't, I don't, I don't follow Yates. I don't really care, but uh, I recognise greatness, and I don't think that he's been bettered. I don't think he has. I just see it like it is. I'm just looking at it like it is. When someone does, I mean, you know what? Lee Henny was amazing. Yeah, his I'm last really friend, which was the ultimate fucking uh, um, unbelievable. Oh, so but now, excuse me. When he got Yates, the come on, whose lats go forward oh. in the chest? Whose goes? No. Yeah, nobody. It was nobody. Come on. proportion, leg, everything was perfection. It was mm. amazing, and no one's touched that. No one has. Uh, so uh, there's that. But I don't. I don't see in bodybuilders. Body I'm not seeing anything. I'm not, I'm not impressed. I'm not, not impressed. That Dutch guy, who's that guy from Holland? The Dutch guy? The Dutch guy? I think you mentioned Yeah, I think it's Roddy Winkler. I think it, that's that's who you're thinking of. He's the only Dutch guy I can think of. Uh, yes, his name? He won recently. He looks great. Jeez. Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. man. Yeah. So you got you training this week? You in tomorrow in the gym? At least three times a week. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, fifty-nine years old, maybe sixty. You're still fucking kicking it. Yeah, I'm fucking doing it. Oh, I love it. Absolutely. No, yeah. I can't. It's stopping. Yeah, I can't. I just it. can't see me ever stopping. I can't see me ever stopping training. No way. No way. Ain't gonna happen. Uh, certainly not. I'm not, not changing, but certainly lighter. A lot lighter. I mean the uh, the old connection, the old bones and whatever. Well, yeah, but um. Yeah, I'm still I'm still out lifting people, even younger than me. I've got no doubt about that. Yeah. Okay, buddy. 
How about we? Oh, not on that. Not on every rap. Not not not, not on every. Trust me, I've blown away mostly. But yeah, I got the I got the odd move, sneaky move. <laughs> okay, so uh, well, let's. Uh, okay, man. Thanks for that. Really on. appreciate it, Biz. Okay, pleasure. Okay. Pleasure. And an honor to talk to you, Ben. Pleasure. I'll be in touch. I'll send you through a copy. And um, we'll talk again very soon. Okay. Take care of yourself, man. Great to see you. Okay. See you, buddy. Bye bye. <laughs> And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed the conversation and that you got some very useful information about how art imitates life and vice versa. As Simon's art inspired me in my first gym, looking up as Conan on the wall as I did incline presses, as did our workouts in together inspire Simon's artwork in helping him see and feel how the body moves when the muscles are working in a certain way but also how the intensity of a heavy duty workout is almost an identical sensation to the intensity of one of his characters as he or she smashes into battle or tears down the doors to win the day and conquer adversity. It was a great talk with Simon as it always is. Knowing I was going to share it with you was even better. And it's just the first in what I hope I'm sure will be a series with Simon as we look at bodybuilding and art and mythology and spirituality and the ways the two art forms are interlinked naturally and seamlessly. Thank you for watching. Another blog post and podcast will be coming up shortly for you very, very soon. And I'll see you then. If you want to read any of my blog posts, you can find all the media information on my website, paulbaxtonell.com. Good night. And as Simon always did, get those three more reps that are inside of you always. Stand out from the rest and fulfill your true purpose. Let's do it. In the gym and in life, three more reps. Good night.